Hello, hey, everyone. everyone. <laughs> I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm, and I'm uh, Vidu, Vidu Vids. Yeah, it's obvious I have no idea what to do. So we're here um, to start an online uh, protest, uh, a three-hour protest uh, in support of an Iranian political prisoner uh, who was initially sentenced uh, to death because of so-called blasphemous posts on Facebook. His sentence um, was then reduced uh, to seven years and then because he's continued to speak out despite uh, the immense torture he's faced, his uh, sentence, there's been an added sentence given to him for another three and a half years. So uh, he's on hunger strike right now since the 4th of April. His name is Sohail Arabi. And we wanted to bring people together today to defend him, to speak on his behalf, to defend the right to blasphemy and freedom of conscience and expression. Uh, so we've got lots of people here, videos, statements that people have sent out. And of course, those of you who are joining us live, we're welcome to you. And we look forward to also seeing your messages of solidarity and support. So shall I go to you now, Vidu? And then uh, maybe after that, we can also bring in Shaheen Mohammadi, uh, who's co-hosting this event with us to say a few words before we go into uh, inviting various guests and speakers to come on with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brahim. I really appreciate you having me on this. And uh, just like you said, you know, earlier, this is such a uh, one of those crimes uh, that are victimless crimes, you know, blasphemies. These are things which people, unfortunately, in in some parts of the world, uh, like you mentioned, in Iran, in, in, in Pakistan as well, where people are being sentenced to death or put in prison. Uh, and really, the whole family suffer uh, as well, along with them, for asking the wrong questions, for saying the wrong things. And um, we're all here to support um, so Hale and other people like him, I myself uh, make YouTube videos where I, you know, poke fun at uh, religious conservatives. I sort of make jokes of the, of these things, and we do so with actually great sort of ease in this country. And it's very unfortunate that other other people across the world can't do the same thing, and people are being put to you know sentenced to prison and much worse for Facebook posts. I mean, this is really and truly. Uh, amazing that we have all this technology and progress but some parts of the world unfortunately are still living in the stone ages mentally speaking so hopefully this live stream and, and others like it can raise awareness even though we are in you know uh this time of corona we can't show we can't physically be there but virtually we are we, we show our support so i would like to um add to the uh, add to the live stream shaheen who could introduce himself mm -hmm. shaheen thank you for joining Shaheen? Can yeah. Hear us? Hey. Hi, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Could Hi, you, I'm uh, Shaheen. Could you yourself? Yes. Yeah, I'm Shaheen. I'm journalist and activist, at least activist right now. And uh, I just wanted to talk about Sohail Arabi's situation. Actually, Sohail, was an, uh, Sohail is an atheist and he was arrested uh, about seven years ago because of insulting. Uh, Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, and uh, they just, uh, for, at the first place, they sentenced him to death. And after some protests, we could uh, change it to seven and a half years imprisonment. And after that, uh, the Islamic regime uh, just tried to, to torture him for a long time. He, they just... Uh, 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 tortured him for a long time, and he was like, uh, he just got uh, trauma blunt in uh, his balls, actually. It it means that they just kicked him in his balls, and he just, uh, one of his balls just got uh, ruined, kind of. And uh, he got uh, trauma blunt. And uh, after a couple of times that he was in, uh, he has actually, he has done hunger strikes for lots of times, or to save other political prisoners, which are right now in prison still. And the last time that he went on hunger strike, it was because of the uh, bad situation that was in um, uh, Fashofuye prison, actually in Tehran. And uh, right now that I'm talking to you, the uh, intelligence service of uh, IRGC, Islamic regimes, uh, uh, Sepah, 
they arrested him because he just sent some uh, uh, articles about the situation in prison. And right now, uh, they got him on uh, arrest, and he's right. He went to a kind of kind of place that he's going to be investigated, and he has to be there for 21 days. And uh, right now, he's in hunger strike. He's about 14, 13 or 14 days of hunger strike. And uh, wow. right now they are torturing him, and we don't we have no idea where they took him right now. He's not even in prison right now, and I just want to we just wanted to talk about him and just try to help him because he doesn't deserve to be in prison anymore, and he has been there for seven years, and uh, they just sentenced him to three and eight three years and eight months more. And it means and three, three and eight months more. And at the same time, he has to go to, he, ha, he, is going, he has to be in exile for two years. He is uh, forbidden of going out of Iran for two years. And this is like chaos, actually. I hope we can do something for him and uh, yeah. Yeah, if I can, so just to be very clear uh, about what Shaheen was saying, is that in addition to the fact that he is in prison now, he has been taken to another location now for further interrogation. Uh, he's on hunger strike. He needs urgent medical care. Uh, so, of course, there's a huge urgency to why we're having this online protest. And while his initial uh, sentencing is over and he should be free, they've added on an additional three plus years um, because of course he's been protesting and it's extremely brave of him. He signs his letters as an atheist. He speaks out against the injustices he's been facing, against torture, against the horrible prison conditions in Iranian prisons, in defense of political prisoners. And so obviously he's under extreme amounts of pressure. His mother's been arrested, his wife's forced to divorce him. There's all this pressure that's taking place. Of course, he's one of many who are in prison in Iran and throughout the world for uh, blasphemy. And of course, as we know, blasphemy is just a matter of opinion. You know, it's what you think, it's what you believe, it's how you express your beliefs. Uh, so it's basically making it a crime to think uh, and speak as you choose, you know, because you decide to criticize what's considered sacred by some. And I think, uh, you know, so this highlights this um, added sort of criminalization of thought and speech. Of course, there are 25% uh, of the countries in the world have blasphemy laws, but only Islamic states punish blasphemy with the death penalty. And I think, uh, you know, that's an added pressure on people who are in prison in places like Iran and Pakistan and so on. Uh, so we we have lots of messages uh, uh, to read to you, video messages, which we're trying to, um, to get um, going and um, uh, to make sure that you're, you'll be able to see them. Uh, but also we have some other people waiting uh, in this room now with us would like to speak and I think one of them is um, Rishvin Ismat and he is uh, the founder of the Council of Ex-Muslims of Sri Lanka. He's someone who's actually uh, been on the death list of ISIS. Uh, uh, they tried to assassinate him twice. Uh, so he's someone who knows very well what blasphemy laws mean uh, and its effects on people's lives and we're really happy to have you here with us Rishvin. Uh, thank you, Mariam. I hope uh, you can all hear me. Okay, uh, it's really sad situation what Sahin said about uh, Sohail al Arabi was listening to uh, his uh, speech about him. And uh, at the same time, I thank you all for coming this uh, to this uh, live program to protest because we are unable to do the protest in physical. So at least we can use this platform to voice. Uh, raise our voices on support of him. So I was one of them that you said, and I am uh, for the information. I am not even living in a Muslim majority country. Even in the country where I am living and where I was born, the percentage of Muslim is somewhere around 10 percent. But uh, by law or by uh, taking the law or by the government, they try to do the same thing. So uh, in the history, there are a lot of religions. 
maybe some other religions also practice these things if you go to the histories but at today in this day islam is the only religion or the muslims who are motivated by islam is carrying out such a things when there are law the governments uh, take care of the matters and they punish the people arrest the people countries like saudi arabia even in egypt we know that there are a lot of people got stuck in egypt they cannot come out of the country they are uh, uh, free thinkers atheists and ex muslims and in pakistan where the people take the law into their hand like uh, mashal khan we know what happened to him for allegedly publishing some material supposed to be uh, blasphemous so the people took the law into their hand if the people uh, if you if if you if you escape from the people then the government is there to look after you so mm -hmm. there are two kind of setups so there's no escape for these uh, people even muslim minority countries like uh, the india one of the biggest democratic country next to my country but there are also so the same thing happened and you all know that we lost one of our ex muslim activists in 2017 for just expressing his views he didn't harm anybody just like we do we say in his uh, interdicts and first the harmless uh, expression that it is uh, portrayed as a crime and those who express their ideas views or disagreement with something is being punished very severely and being killed and this is supported by the law uh, when it when there is a small criticism about islam happens in the west the liberal left or the the, the, the people the media coming and calling it islam phobia and try to stop it but when people say this one in islamic countries and they are being put behind the bars uh, under torture but there is no not, uh, not much uh, attraction even the media might have forgotten about uh, rifal badav in saudi arabia this is only one name there are a lot and even women for just trying to drive a car in the streets being put behind the bar so this is all happening in islamic country and where are the muslims are following islam so this is the problem something with islam so we have to address it with its original root thank you uh, we really appreciate your coming here and taking the time uh, to defend Sahila Abi. Uh, solidarity to you, and uh, uh, we look forward to working together uh, for, for many more years to come on, on these issues and others. Uh, we now have uh, Savalan Qutsi, um, and he is uh, one of the founders of the Council of Ex-Muslims of uh, the Netherlands. Uh, and I think also feel comfortable to speak in English and Farsi or either uh, Shahin, maybe after Savalon, we can have you also speak uh, a bit in Farsi and explain what this is all about. Benazam Khili Mohemme ke be zaban Farsi an betunim sohbat konim dostani ke Farsi zaban hastan betunan payamai khodechun inja began dar defa sohel Arabi va dar defa zendaniyan siyasi ke tu Iran hastan ve kesayi ke be khater کفگویی و ارتداد الان زندگیشون در خطره یکی از اون افراد خب سهل عربیه و ما واقعا نگران وضعیتش هستیم و به همین خاطرم این اعتراض آنلاین رو داریم سازمان میدیم بفرمایید سوالان عزیز شما صحبت کنید Hello everyone, I'm gonna talk in English first. Uh, thank you everyone for watching us and joining us uh, for this online protest. I'm Savalan, um, and it's really sad and terrible to see that uh, someone has to do such a protest to get a hunger strike uh, to, 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 just for, uh, to just earn his freedom. Uh, this month, April, was really sad month for us because at 3rd April, uh, I just heard that uh, another uh, woman from Turkey uh, just died from hunger strike. It was actually death strike. And one day after that, we heard that uh, Soil Arabi started his hunger strike. Uh, the woman's name was Helen Bullock, by the way. Uh, so, uh, but despite all of these uh, terror of uh, terrors of uh, Islamic regimes, we see that uh, the number of uh, Free, uh, freedom thinkers or ex-Muslims are rising and we are uh, getting more and more uh, followers or leaders in, in this kind of organizations. 
and I'm uh, and I know that one day we will succeed, and uh, let's not lose hope uh, uh, for this. Uh, I, I I prepared a short video. Uh, sorry that it's not so good. Uh, it doesn't have so good quality because uh, the lack of equipment in this uh, guarantee uh, COVID nineteen days, but. Uh, it was supposed to be a part of a theater show, uh, which uh, we which uh, we were going to play, but uh, because of this quarantine, it got cancelled. Uh, it uh, I'm gonna explain it a little bit. You, uh, it's a percussion called djembe. Uh, I play it, and in the background, you might hear uh, some voices of talking or, or speeches. It's a mix of. Um, different speeches of dictators around the world. I use like five or six of them, uh, present dictators, the, the ones that are still on power. Uh, I would like to name a few of them, uh, just to be clear. One of them is uh, Erdogan in Turkey, which is Islamic. Uh, he's been on power since 2003 and 17 years. The other one is Khamenei, prime supreme leader of Iran, which is in, um, on the power since 1989. Uh, the, the third one is Ilham Aliyev. He's from Azerbaijan, and uh, he's also on power since 2003. They, they call them, some of them uh, calling, are calling themselves uh, president, and they call like, yeah, we, we got elected, but they are in power for 20 years, 30 years, or even more. Uh, it's It's really uh, horrible to say that people have to endure this kind of people. The first one is Kim Jong, which, you know, Supreme Leader of uh, North Korea. And the fifth one is uh, Yoweri uh, Museveni from uh, Uganda. There, there, there are so many more, but uh, I, I, I didn't use all of them. I didn't have the equipment. So I invite you to uh, watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much, Savalan. We look forward to it. And thank you for being here with yeah. us. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, our lovely Vida Visits uh, is uh, trying to get that uh, performance by Savalan up and running. Um, in the meanwhile, I can read you um, a message that we've got from um, filmmaker Dia Khan uh, to Sohail. She says, this message goes to Sohail and all the other brave people campaigning for freedom of belief and expression from me and all at Fuse. Sohail, we support you. Uh, and we deplore the violence perpetrated against you. We admire your courage and your determination against the Iranian regime. We won't let your struggle go unnoticed. We won't allow your message to be silenced. We call on everyone to join the campaign for freedom of Sohail. And I think now uh, that was from Dia Khan, uh, the filmmaker, and I think the video is now ready, a uh, Savalon's video um, performance for Sohail.
Oh, wonderful. That was really wonderful. Thank you, Savalon. That was excellent. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for your comments, uh, um, your, your live comments. Uh, it's really good to hear from you. We will link um, uh, the videos later on. We'll, we'll make all of those available for you at the end of this live broadcast. Um, thanks again to Savalon. I think now maybe Shaheen um, would you like to come up and introduce our next uh, our next guest who, who's here and will be speaking uh, with us. Um, I would like to, uh, sorry, I was, I had a mix up in, in, inter, in my internet. I couldn't hear you well, Mariam Jan. But I just wanted to talk in Persian and uh, give a little bit uh, information about Sohail in Persian. Uh, من میخواستم الان درباره سهل صحبت بکنم سهل عربی زندانی سیاسی و فعال سیا... فعال تلاش ها و مقامت هایی که کرد که انجام شد حکم اعدام سهل تغییر کرد به هفت سال و نیم زندان دو سال تحقیقات مذهبی دو سال ممنوعیت خروج از کشور و بعد از اون در واقع خب به خاطر بارها و بارها فشاری که روی زندانیان سیاسی آوردن مسئولین زندان ها و جمهوری اسلامی سهیل رو سهیل به اتصاب غذا دست زد بارها برای انواع و اقسام زندانیان سیاسی در واقع دست به اتصاب غذاهای طولانی مدت زد و الان بعد و خب توی این تمام مدت این هفت سال سهیل هیچ گونه اجازه مرخصی و ملاقات بچه ها و خانوادش بچه و خانوادش رو نداره سهل باید یادوار بشم سهل یه دختر بچه ببینه خب نه دختر بچهش میتونه وارد زندان بشه به خاطر حالا تلیل امنیتی که هست و به خاطر شرایط سنی که داره و خب به سهل هم مرخصی ندادن بارها سهل رو آزار دادن بارها سهل رو شکنجه کردن سهل رو به قرارگاه سار الله بردن بارها و در قرارگاه سار الله شکنجش کردند که این شکنجه اونها باعث شد که سهل به بیماری ترومای بلانت مبتلا بشه ترومای بلانت یعنی له شدگی بیزه له شدگی یک عضو از بدن و خب سهل بیزه چپش این بالا سرش اومد و خب بارها این و این شکنجه ها خلاصه نشد شکنجه های است... بازجوها به این چیزا خلاصه نشد این بازجوها در کنار این شکنجه ها معمورین در زندان ها یک سری افرادی رو دارن که خب کارشون یک سری زندانیان و یک سری مجرمین در واقع که کارشون فروش مواد هست ماموران زندانیان معمولا از این افراد به عنوان وکیل بند یعنی یا مسئول زندان استفاده میکنن که این افراد معمولا دست راست و در واقع کمک کننده 
مزدوران جمهوری اسلامی هستن ماموران جمهوری اسلامی هستن بارها سهيل رو بینیش رو شکستند در خواب با مشت به بینی سهيل کوبیدن بینی سهيل رو شکستند به خاطر اینکه میخواستن از سهيل اعتراف اجباری بگیرن و سهيل زیر بار نمیرفت و خب یک بارش هم دقیقا این بلا سرش اومد که تو خواب بود و با مشت به بینیش کوبیدن و خیلی راحت اون کسی که این کارو کرد فرار کرد و خب همه اینها به خاطر این بود که از سهيل اعترافات اجباری بگیرن و دلیل دیگه دلیل دیگه این بود که سهيل به عنوان یک خبرنگار سعی میکرد از شرایط زندان برای مردم بگیره و مردم از شرایط وز و وضعیت اسفناک زندان با خبر بشن به خاطر اینکه زندان ها زندان های جمهوری اسلامی در واقع مکانی شده برای فروش مواد و مکانی شده برای جنایت های خود جمهوری اسلامی که در واقع خود جمهوری اسلامی هدفش این هست که این بلا رو سر زندانیان و مخصوصا سیاسیون بیاره و اونها رو مبتلا بکنه یا بهشون فشار بیاره و خب مجبورشون کنه به اعترافات اجباری خودخوشی های در واقع اجباری یا حالا مسائل از این قبیل سهيل بار آخری که به اعتصاب قضا دست زد به دلیل اینکه شرایط زندان الان اسفناک هست یعنی اسفبار هست و ویروس کرونا وارد زندان شده و خیلی از زندانیان مبتلا شدند سهيل این کارو کرد به خاطر اینکه بگه که زندانیان سیاسی رو باید آزاد بکنید یا به مرخصی بفرستید زندانیان سیاسی در واقع حقشون نیست که تو این برای تو زندان ها باشن و دوچار این بیماری بشن این یکی از دلایلش بود و دلایل دیگش ظلم مضاعفی بود که به سهيل شده ظلم مضاعفی که به سهيل شده چی هست این هست که سهيل رو به دلیل مقاومت در مقابل افسران مقاومت در مقابل بازجوها و در واقع آگاهی رسانی از شرایط زندان به دو سال زندان محکوم کردند و یک بار دیگرش هم به خاطر اینکه سهيل در اثر حمله مزدوران جمهوری اسلامی از خودش دفاع کرد تلویزیون بازداشتگاه آسیب میبینه و از جمهوری اسلامی به خاطر آسیب دیدن این تلویزیون تلویزیونی که بارها به زندانیان فروخته شده بود و هزینهش گرفته شده بود به خاطر شکست شدن این تلویزیون سهيل رو به یک سال هشت ماه زندان با محکوم کردن که الان سهيل با وعده مددیاری که تو زندان بود بار اول به غذاش میشکنه که به مدت مجددا البته دست بعد از نه روز که میبینه به وعده هاشون عمل نمیکنن مجددا دست به اعتصاب غذا میزنه دست به اعتصاب غذای خشک میزنه به مدت 5 6 روز هیچ گونه آبی نمی نوشه هیچ گونه غذایی نمیخوره و بعد از این مدت مجددا با وعده مسئولین و مددیاران زندان مجددا دست به اعتصاب غذای خوشش رو تبدیل میکنه به اعتصاب غذای تر و آب مینوشه جوره آب مینوشه که همون رو هم به خاطر چسبندگی معده‌ای که داره و شرایط وخیمی به خاطر داره به خاطر اعتصاب غذاهای طولانی مدت همون آب رو هم نمیتونه درست بنوشه و خب متاسفانه بالا میاره Okay. ببخشید شاهین جان ممنون من فکر کنم یه خورده بذاریم مهمون های دیگه همون بیان یه, یه خورده انگلیس هم حرف بزنیم بعد دوباره برگردیم بیشتر روی این موضوع صحبت کنیم دیگه اجازه به اشکال نداشته باشه Thank you all for those of you who didn't speak Persian don't speak Persian Shaheen was explaining the situation of Sohail Arabi his, his condition in prison and uh, the types of activism that he's done. We'd like to now invite uh, a, another guest of ours who's in the studio. Uh, she's a YouTuber, Fay Rahman. We'd like to have her come up and uh, speak uh, on this issue. Welcome, Fay, and thank you for being with us. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Um, in terms of the issue, I'm, I mean, there's very little that I can say. I think that I'm quite new to this movement anyway. Um, but um, last year, we did quite a few demonstrations for Sahel Arabi. We did a protest outside of the Iranian embassy um, through Atheist Republic while Armin Navabi was in the country. Um, and I remember sitting uh, in a cafe and listening to Ali Malik tell me about all of these, uh, all of the different punishments uh, that people around the world were going through for blasphemy. And it it really is something that I cannot comprehend. Um, free thought is such a, it's such a 
simple thing to want as a human being. It's such a small thing to want. And I think it's the foundation on which we build ourselves and we build our own um, personalities and identities. And to not have that in a world and also be afraid to reveal that to the world, I think is is a very, very scary reality. Um, I am still kind of shell-shocked that Sahel Arabi is in, imprisoned being tortured on and off death row for over seven years for a Facebook post. It blows my mind that that is something that the wider community around the world isn't talking about because I feel as though if something like that happened here in the UK or in the US or somewhere, you know, westernized and liberal and things like that, we would not hear the end of it. Um, and we would fight for that person to be out of prison they should not be there simply for what they believe. But I find that whenever I talk about Sahel Arabi to outsiders from this movement, so anyone who isn't an ex-Muslim or, you know, isn't part of the circle, they kind of go, well, he should have known better he was in Iran. Um, but it's just, it, it just seems like this desensitization to, to this awful, awful reality that so many people face in other countries. And um, I think for a long time myself, I was against blasphemy. I didn't really see the point of it. I didn't really understand why people partook in it. But after hearing how many people are subjected to, you know, not only prison and death, but also um, this trial by community where the mob will get you either way, um, it really opened my eyes to we need to hold our voices for these people and it is not our place to look down at these people for blaspheming because they are really fighting for free speech in their countries and free speech for their people. Um, and while I deeply, deeply respect this man's effort to, uh, as a prisoner of conscience and as an atheist and as someone who is challenging the societal norms of the country that he's living in, I am really, really worried that something horrible will happen to him, um, as has been happening to him for seven years. Uh, and I just wanted to come here and do my part and say that we we support you and we see what you're doing and your efforts are not lost um, on us. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Mariam. Great, thank you so much, Faye, for, for being here and giving us your message. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we also have uh, others who are waiting to, to speak. Uh, one of them is Shakila Salimi. Uh, she's an Iranian atheist. She's going to be speaking in Persian. Uh, Shakila, John, Mikhail, Alan, Biyoy, Ria Sahne. Uh, thank you all for your messages as well. Uh, keep keep them coming and keep watching. We've got lots more messages uh, to come. But fine, mind Shakila, John. سلام 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 دوربین خب میتونین برگردونین به خودتون که بشه استفاده کرد بفرمایید فکر کنم الان درست شد یه لحظه بعد سلام عرض میکنم خدمت همه خیلی ممنون که وقت گذاشتید اومدید و توی این آکسیم شرکت کردید من هم یک آتئیست هستم و خودم یه فعال آتئیست میدونم که عقایدم واسم خیلی مهمه و براش می جنگم مسئله سوهل عربی خب چند نکته ای هستش که من دوستم راجبش بگم یک این که خب ما باید تمام تلاشمونو بکنیم که سوهل عربی اتفاقی براش نیفته و نجات پیدا کنه این خیلی مسئله مهمیه 
نه فقط صرفا به خاطر جان سوهیل که خب جان جونش خیلی مهمه ولی خب این مسئله میتونه یکی از شکسته جمهوری اسلامی باشه که به فهم اتحاد همه ماها میتونه جلوی کشتارای وحشیانه اونو به خاطر آتیست شدن کسی بگیره و اینکه سوهیل یکی از دلایل دیگه ای که به نظر من خیلی مهمه که بخوایم هر طور شده بهش کمک کنیم یعنی هر کس با هر عقیده ای با هر جریانی اینه که یک شخص فقط به خاطر بیان عقیدش داره این بله سرش میاد و لزومی نداره کسی که بخواد مثلا کمک کنه بخواد فعالیت کنه براش بخواد هر تلاشی که بکنه بخواد حمایت کنه حتما سیاسی باشه یا سواد سیاسی داشته باشه که این کار صرفا مثلا حمایت از جریان سیاسی باشه بلکه این فقط نجات دادن یه جونه انسانیه که کاملا بیگونه بی تقصیره و اینکه اگه بخوام از نظر یه آتیست نظرم بدم اینه که سوهیل خودش نماد تناقض اسلامه چرا که یه جای خود اسلام گفته هیچ اجباری در دین نیست و جای دیگه ایش برداشته گفته که کافرها رو بکشیدشون و دقیقا جمهوری اسلامی هم داره از همین تناقض استفاده میکنه و جون سوهیل به خطر انداخته به خاطر همین مسئله سوهیل از نظر من مسئله خیلی مهمیه و خیلی مهمه که مردم جامعه رو هر کسی هر فعالی و هر نحوی بتونه مردم جامعه رو پیوند بده تو فعالیت فعالیت هر کس در حد توانش فعالیتی که حالا حتما هم تو خطر نیفته خب خیلی هستن تو ایران فعالیت میکنن سر موضوعات دیگه سر مسائل دیگه و میتونن در در حین فعالیتشون این موضوع هم داخلش بگوجونن و این مسئله رو تو مردم پررنگ ترش کنن ممنون که به من فرصت دادی حرف بزنم دیگه صحبتی ندارم خیلی ممنون خیلی ممنون شکیل سلیمی واقعا دستتون در نکنه خسته نباشین thank you شکیل سلیمی for your message of solidarity uh, with uh, Sohail Arabi uh, we're going to uh, show you a, a video now message from um, Harris Sultan he's a Pakistani Um, ex-Muslim uh, who's in Australia right now. He's an activist and YouTuber. He's also sent a message of solidarity uh, with Sohail Arabi. So we're going to show you that uh, right now. My dear brother, Sohail Arabi. While you suffer in prison at the hands of a brutal religious dictatorship in Iran, people like us who value freedom of conscience and freedom from religion owe everything to brave people like you. My heart beats with you and I look for the day when you will be free from the tyranny of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Your story was one of the reasons I came out as an atheist and a human rights activist. You have inspired not just me, but many, many activists around the world. It's been seven years since you were taken away and put in prison for doing what we all deserve and take for granted. That is freedom to speak. But these cowards fear words, words that don't have any guns or bombs, but they carry reason, the greatest threat of all for these tyrants. Your words of reason have trembled the mightiest of despots, shaken the very foundation of the castle of tyranny. You have instilled fear in their hearts. You have been tortured and humiliated, but you haven't been broken. Your spirit is far stronger than any lash on the back can break. You teach us every day what bravery truly is. You are a treasure for this world, and we demand the Islamic Republic of Iran to release you immediately.
Well, thank you for that, Harsworth, and that was a wonderful, a wonderful message. I uh, we we have some guests in the studio. I'd like to just read you another message of solidarity uh, sent from Pragna Patel, who is the director of South Hall Black Sisters. She says, "Dear Sohail, I do not know you." but you know all of us because you're fighting for all of us, for our freedoms, our dignity, and for our humanity. Today, I'm thinking of you and all political prisoners uh, in Iran and around the world. Thank you for your bravery and courage. Thank you for standing up for us all. Thank you for standing up for freedom of expression and conscience. I know that in your prison cell, surrounded by the forces of torture and inhumanity, a mere thank you is not enough. But I hope that by registering my voice of protest, I will join the voices of many in resistance in the hope that our voices will grow so loud and strong that even the brutal Iranian regime will no longer be able to ignore us. Martin Luther King once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. My friend, I stand with you in solidarity in your fight to be free from justice. So that was... Pragna Patel, thank you very much for your message of solidarity. We have a number of people in the studio right now. Uh, let me uh, bring in um, Elike, um, sorry, uh, Elike Ashuri. Hello, Elike, w welcome uh, to, to the program. It's, it's wonderful to have you. Elike's uh, father is a political prisoner in Iran. He's one of the dual nationals that are being held. Uh, thank you for coming to show your solidarity with Sohail Arabi and likewise we all show our solidarity with your father and the many others who are in prisons in Iran and elsewhere. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, well, uh, to be honest with you, my father had never been political in his life. Um, uh, when he was arrested two years ago, we were all shocked because we didn't know why for about four months because uh, he was kept in solitary confinement and we weren't told why. And um, uh, it only uh, it was after four months where they came and raided my uh, grandmother's house where my dad kept all his uh, business uh, files because he was uh, retired for two years. Uh, they hacked into our emails, our our online accounts, um, all our computers and documents, but um, they couldn't find anything that's remotely political in anything, any of them. And uh, after a year and a half, this is cutting a story really, really short. After a year and a half, when they did indict him, the paper that they gave him in the indictment says that there is not enough evidence to sentence this guy to be a spy. So we are going by the presumption that he's a spy and giving him 12 years in prison. Um, so yeah, I, I think the reason all these dual nationals are being held and they're being held, you know, there's a lot of them, but obviously their family, because of some of the families still being in Iran, a lot of these um, political prisoners are not coming forward. I mean, I know that in my dad's ward, there are about... 50 or 60 dual nationals from different countries and only four or five of them have gone public with their stories and um, all of them have the same exact charge and most of them have never been granted lawyers or only granted lawyers when they've actually been inside the court and that's the court of appeals not the first court that they are tried in because that's literally just them and the judge it's it's not even a court as we know it and um yeah they um they do sentence these people because they want something from the other country that they hold a the nationality from um in case of the uk um the main um ransom that they want is the 450 million pound debt that england is owed to iran from the time of shah and um, obviously England denied this. I mean, they haven't been very cooperative either. And it was when I think Mr. Zarif actually came on public television and said blatantly that this is what we want in order to free the UK nationals, including my dad, uh, Aras Amiri and Miss Na Mrs. Nazanin Ratcliffe, um, is, to, if, is for this debt to be paid. And... Um, we do 
we do know this now and uh, the British government can't deny it anymore, but nothing is really being done. Uh, at first it was Brexit, um, which kind of deflected from the issue of the dual nationals being taken hostages. And obviously now with coronavirus taking over, um, no one's really focusing on these people which is a shame because um, Britain, I think, as we know recently, spent uh, £75 million to bring back all the Britons that were stuck on holiday abroad. So people who were in New Zealand, Australia, um, India, people who were in relative comfort that were speaking into, like they were doing interviews on TV um, on beaches and near swimming pools. And these people were brought home with chartered planes, but there's no mention of the dual nationals at all. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, exactly. And I think uh, one of the things too is that this just shows the inhumanity of this, this the, the system there in the sense that also, for example, a crime you know he's just written a post on facebook uh he's expressed his opinions in the same way uh, the dual nationals are being used uh, uh the so-called blasphemy charges are also being used in another way in order to maintain power and control and uh and suppress uh, the population at large so i think all of these cases are linked even if uh, they're they're very different uh uh, reasons for why they've been imprisoned. And a lot of people who are languishing in Iranian prisons are not necessarily political activists. But I think because uh, of what they say or what they do, um, even, you know, deciding not to wear the veil anymore, it, these all become political actions against the state. And, 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 and in this, a lot of innocent people are in prison and criminals are running the country, basically, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I think um, that that's the sad reality of it. And it's important that we stand up for your father, for Sohail Arabi, for, for all those who are in Iran, who are prisoners of conscience in a way, or, or being used as hostages. Absolutely, definitely. Thank you so much, Elika, for joining us. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. And uh, we hope uh, your father is freed very soon as well. Uh -huh. Um, thank you uh, all. I think there's uh, quite a few people who are in the studio right now waiting to speak with us. Um, before I bring them in, let me just read a uh, message from uh, the human rights activist Nazanin Afshin Jam. She's uh, written a message uh, for Sohail Arabi. She says, during this time of isolation and just having passed Easter weekend, I can't help but reflect on how blessed I feel to be able to practice my faith and freedom. I'm thinking about prisoners of conscience like Sohail Arabi who've received death sentences in Iran simply for being an atheist and questioning Islam and the supreme spiritual leader of Iran, Khamenei. Freedom of religion includes uh, the choice not to believe in a higher power and uh, it's a fundamental human right. Expressing it is freedom of conscience. It's also a fundamental human right and it's not a crime and certainly can't be used by a state to condemn someone to, uh, the death penalty. The UN freedom loving people worldwide have to do everything in their power to save the life of Sohail and other prisoners of conscience who are suffering grave human rights abuses in jail, heavy sentences and fines, and now their lives are in jeopardy in crowded jail cells with the threat of the spread of coronavirus. And she says uh, that she stands in solidarity with uh, Sohail Arabi. Uh, we have now, I think, in the studio, a few people waiting. Can we have uh, uh, Mohsene Safar Elohi, please, joining us? Uh, uh, welcome, Mohsen, and the floor is yours. Durud mi farestam be tamam azadi khaham. Man yek ateist hastam, dar in moridam. Sa'i mikonam, faaliyat dashte basham, agahi be bakcham atrafiyanamu. شعری از زنده یاد سیمین بهرهانی میخونم مادران هر نیمه شب بر در خانه هم میکوبند که ای مادر مادران خفتیده ای دختران من را پسران من را رو بودند چهرهشان را صدایشان را نمیبینیم نمیشنویم خفتیده ای جویای دانش بودند 
گم شدند گرمای آتش بودند خاکستر شدند خفتیده ای میگویم من کجا خواب از کجا فریادم در توهی نای هوا می میرد امواج را از کوتاه و بلند و میانه گردن زدند ای سلسل جنبانان خود جگرگوشگان دارید جگرگوشگان ما را بیش میازارید رهایشان کنید تا رها شوید از, آ... از عذابی که میکشید ای سلسل جنبانان گر سلسل جنبانید زین بیش مرنجانید سهیل را کجا بردید کلامش را کجا بردید کلامش به پیش ماست تنش را به حسار بردید به امید آزادی سهیل عربی و تمام زندانیان عقیدتی و سیاسی بدرود خیلی ممنون واقعا خیلی شعر قشنگی بود واقعا خسته نباشین مرسی که این دو بودید با ما و به امید دیدار و فعالیت بیشتر برای آزادی سوهل عربی و تمام زندانیان سیاسی واقعا کمترین وظیفه بود کمترین وظیفه بود خیلی ممنون که اینجا بود uh, Thank you uh, That was a beautiful poem uh, that Mohsen Safar Elohi just read out and uh, now we are going to invite another one of our guests um, we have uh, also in the studio uh, Milad uh, uh, Resai Manesh uh, welcome Milad uh, uh, thank you for coming into the program and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Please, uh, um, you're welcome to take the floor. Thank you very much. If you hear me, I'd like to start out the camera first. I don't know what's, what is wrong with this. Thing. Okay, while you're, while you're doing the camera, can I just read out another message of solidarity, please? Uh, this is from Mariama Helelukis. She's the founder of Secularism is a Women's Issue. She said yeah. that repression of free thought is something that belongs to the Dark Ages. The Iranian regime is cynically using religion to impose itself upon people. Neither sincere believers in Islam nor secular mm. agnostics and atheists can condone the eradication of our most fundamental human rights, the freedom of conscience and expression. Mullahs, you don't speak for the people as street demonstrations have made very clear <coughs> in the past, and you don't even speak for believers as you pretend. I salute the courage and persistence of Sohail Arabi in defending our right to blasphemy, which is what is left to us when our freedom from religion is taken away. Free Sohail Arabi and long live free thought. So that was a message from Mariam Mahalalukis, founder of Secularism is a Women's Issue. Uh, welcome, Milad. Uh, please, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you, Mariam, and the rest of the people running such a brilliant idea like online demonstration. This is the first time actually I'm seeing such a thing. It's a very brilliant idea, specifically at this time that we all quarantine because of coronavirus. Uh, I think we, de we really needed to have something regarding the Sohail case uh, and then we did it this, like we came across with this brilliant idea, online demonstration. Thank you for having me. Um, the thing is, um, I think we all know what's happening. Uh, the people been attending the seminar so far know what happened to Sohail Arabi and the case, uh, actually the situation he's facing at the moment. I would like to point out a few things. Uh, first of all, I think it's everyone's duty, every atheist, everyone who actually fighting for a, for a bare world uh, to support and stand on the side of Sohail, to be somehow the voice of Sohail. Um, if you see yourself as an atheist, for example, if you see yourself, define yourself as a free thinker or like an ex-Muslim, actually, um, it's up to you guys to stand on the side of Sohail and be his voice and do your best to like um, help him be out of the prison. Uh, it's like beside the human case of him, uh, like everyone's supposed to be free to express themselves. Everyone's uh, supposed to be, um, have like a basic human rules 
even if they are in prison. Uh, Suhail Arabi is the spokesperson of all atheists in the world. Um, it's a movement, it's a global movement. And Suhail is one valuable, uh, I would say, warrior for this movement. So if you see yourself, as I said, as an atheist or like ex-Muslim or whatever, whatever you are, like how you define yourself doesn't really matter. It's the time to stand on side of Suhail Arabi and like somehow try to support and um, be his voice all around the globe. Uh, that's my message to all the atheists around the world. It's about time to do that all of you guys do something. Uh, we at the Central Committee of Ex-Muslim in Scandinavia have been focused and uh, like been very hardcore uh, to be uh, the voice of Suhail Arabi and spread the world about the things happening regarding his case. I guess everyone else should do the same thing. Uh, that would be my message. Um, any question? <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Milad. It was uh, great having you here. Uh, thank you for uh, being here with us uh, and uh, always fighting uh, for uh, these important issues for people like Sohail Arabi. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think the next person we have uh, in the studio um, uh, is... Um, Ali Faryad, uh, I'm not sure if Ali Faryad is here. Uh, if you can please join us uh, in the studio. Um, thank you. It's, it's hello, Faryad. It's very good to have you. 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 Hello, Faryad. It's من مطلب کوتاهی رو میخواستم بگم خیلی وقتتون رو نمیگیرم دوستانم صحبت کنند از نگاه من بیشترین نفرت از مجازات در واقع نفرت از اون کسانیه که اونقدر به باورهای خودشون و عقاید خودشون اعتقاد دارن که این اجازه رو به خودشون میدن که دیگران رو بی هیچ تردیدی مجازات کنند و این در حالیه که خودشون جنایتکارن از نگاه من ما نمیتونیم در این حال که خودمون جنایتکاریم جنایت رو برای خودمون و کیفر و مجازات رو برای دیگران در نظر بگیریم از نگاه من یا در زندانها رو باز کنید و سوهل و امثال سوهل رو آزاد کنید و یا اون قداست خودتون رو اثبات کنید که فکر میکنم یک چیز مزهک و دست نیافتنی باشه به عنوان یک عضو کوچیک از جامعه بزرگ آتیستای سرفراز مطالبه میکنم و دادخواهی میکنم آزادی هرچه سریتر سوهل و همه زندانی های سیاسی رو بیش از این وقتتون رو نمیگیرم ممنون از این که فرصت به هم دادیم واقعا دستتون در نکنه خسته نباشین خیلی خوشحال شدیم که شما با ما بودید در این مبارزه برای آزادی سهل عربی و زندانیان سیاسی در ایران و همه جای دنیا که به خاطر کفگویی به خاطر عقاید خودشون الان زندانی هستن ممنون فریاد عزیز ممنون از شما مرسی خیلی ممنون our next guest is uh, Shahab Zaghibi I think uh, who, who should be in the studio right now uh, while we're waiting for Shahab uh, I would like to uh, read you another uh, message uh, Shahab uh, has been to your studio um, okay شهاب مثل این که نیستن الان ولی محشاد افشار هستن بفرمایید محشاد جان محشاد افشار is an Iranian filmmaker uh, living in the UK and she joins us now uh, to show her solidarity with Sohail uh, Arabi and also political prisoners in Iran uh, welcome uh, محشاد the floor is yours مریم جان خیلی تشکر میکنم از اینکه امروز من رو هم فراخان کردید به این همایش و 
اعتراض آنلاین اتفاقا من چند روزی بود که به این موضوع خیلی فکر می کردم که در این روزهایی که شاید زندانیان سیاسی تنها ترین هستند در زندان ها و بیشتر از همیشه برای زندگی خودشون ترس دارن چرا جامعه هنری، سلبریتی ها و همه کسانی که فضای مجازی رو اشغال کرده بودن با هجویات و واقعا حضور بی مصرف خودشون با شعاف های علکی و فقط دنبالتن فالوئر های میلیونی هست و پوز های مزهک بی مصرف امروز اون آدم ها کجا هستند؟ چرا هیچ اثری ازشون نیست؟ چرا برای انسان هایی که فالوئر هاشون بودن برای همه اون ایرانی هایی که دست و پا براشون شکوندن هیچ امروز حرکتی نشون نمیدن این انسان ها دیروز البته از عده کمی از سینماگران ایران که هفتش نفر هستن یک بیانیه اومد که در حقیقت برای تأمین بهداشت و سلامت زندانیان عقیدتی سیاسی و فعالان محیط زیست دور هم جمع شدن و این بیانیه رو دادن و درخواست کردن که به خاطر این پندگی که الان وجود داره و تهدیدی که برای جان زندانیان سیاسی و غیر عقیدتی و فعالان وجود داره دولت حرکتی انجام بده و بیشتر از این اشتباه نکنه بیشتر از این جان این انسان ها رو به خطر نندازه که از کسانی که این نامه رو امضا کردن داریوش مرجوی جعفر پناهی علیرضا داوود نژاد کیومرث پور احمد محمد رسولوف محسن امیر یوسفی مجتبا میر تحماس و رضا دوردشون هستن فیلم آخر آقای محمد رسولوف که بعد از اونم درخواست کردن ازشون که خودشون رو به دادگاه و در حقیقت برای زندانی شدن معرفی بکنن با نام شیطان وجود ندارد من میخواستم بگم اتفاقا شیطان خیلی وجود دارد ای کسانی که دم از خدا میزنید شیطان وجود دارد شیطان شماهایی هستید که برای جان انسان ها ارزش قائل نیستید برای امثال سهيل عربی و کسای دیگه ای که به هر دلیلی به خاطر باور داشتن باور نداشتن هر ایده ای که دارن اینا رو زندانی میکنید و امیدوارم که در این روزها مسئولین چشمشون رو باز بکنن و بیشتر به این فکر بکنن که دنیا بهشون داره نگاه میکنه به تصمیماتی که مسئولین در این لحظات میگیرن دنیا چشم دوخته و مسئولینی که میتونید خیلی راحت بودن و نبودن یک زندانی رو در زندان پاش و پای برگش رو امضا کنید شما مطمئن باشید که تاریخ رفتار امروز شما رو به خاطر خواهد سپرد بنابراین من از همه کسانی که دستن در کار هستن از هنرمندان، فعالان حقوق اجتماعی، سیاسی و همچنین مسئولین جمهوری اسلامی فکر میکنم که الان لحظه ای هست که باید شما وظیفه انسانی دارید که امثال سهيل عربی و بقیه زندانیان رو آزاد بکنید و حق ندارید راجع به ها تصمیم بگیرید و اونها رو به مخاطره بندازید خیلی ممنونم مریم جان که این فرصت رو به من دادین من سعی میکنم بیشتر از این وقت برنامه شما رو نگیرم خیلی ممنون محشاد عزیز واقعا دست در نکنه هم برای اکسایی که فرستادی در حمایت از فایل عربی هم برای صحبتات واقعا خسته نباشی میخوای یه پیام انگلیسی هم بدی یا فکر کنم خوبه دیگه دوستان دیگه به زبان انگلیسی هستن خودم ممنون Um, let's now invite um, uh, Samane Nateri, who is in the studio with us, to to uh, give a, a message of solidarity. Uh, Samane, are you there? Um, it would, if if you are, uh, let's hear from you. Samane, be farmai, nice, be farmai. 
سلام به شما مریم عزیز و همه دوستانی که در این آکسیون شرکت کردین ازتون ممنونم که این فرصت رو توی این ایام قرنطینه برای ما فراهم کردیم که بتونیم حمایت بکنیم من یک آتئیست هستم و خیلی خوشحالم که الان اینجا نه تنها برای اینکه میخوایم حمایت بکنیم از سهیل از جان سهیل بیشتر به خاطر اینکه احساس میکنم اگر ما بتونیم دست در دست هم بدیم و ریشه این ظلم رو بخشونیم یه هدیه ای به آیندگان خودمون میدیم و اون هم این هستش که شما در ایران و هر جای دنیا که هستید میتونید آزاد اندیش باشید و هر جور که دوست دارید بدون اینکه به کسی آسیب برسونید ایده عقیده و هر آنچه که توی ذهنتون هست رو بیان بکنید ممنونم امیدوارم که صدای ما برسه به گوش دولت ها که بتونیم فشار بیاریم به دولت جمهوری اسلامی برای آزادی سهیل عربی ممنونم از شما خیلی ممنون سامان عزیزا خسته نباشی مرسی برای پیامتون و برای همه فعالیتاتون واقعا خسته نباشن همه کسایی که امروز اومدن و صحبت کردن به نظرم خب اهمیت زیادی داره که سهیل عربی و همه کسانی که تو زندان هستن بدونن که تنها نیستن و کسان زیادی هستن که دارن تلاش میکنن که آزاد باشن و و, و مهمه براشون که چه سرنوشتی دارن و زندگیشون چطوری داره به سر میره الان خیلی ممنون مرسی خیلی ممنون دوست بعدیمون که توی استودیوس علی شریفی بفرمایید علی شریفی عزیز Mm, we have uh, now another speaker, Ali Sharifi, coming uh, from uh, in the studio. Um, we um, oh, thank you, Ali. Welcome, Ali. Khoshumadin befamain. The floor is yours. Salam arzu kanam khidmat shoma ba shayin aziz. Mamnoon astum ke emruz in barnama ro tashkil dadin. من صحبت زیادی ندارم فقط خواستم چند جمله صحبت کنم در مورد اینکه خب همه دوستان صحبتاشونو کردن اسلام سیاسی نشون داده در طول تاریخ که هر جایی قدرت داشته باشه هر جایی که زور داشته باشه مخالفانش رو خیلی راحت از بین میبره از قتل مرحوم کسروی از اعدام های سال 67 از قتل های زنجیره ای تا قتل مرحوم شیرعلی محمدی پارسال در زندان اسلامی و خیلی خوبه که ما بتونیم صدای سوئیل عربی باشیم بتونیم جون یک انسان رو نجات بدیم و بتونیم از حق آزادی بیان دفاع کنیم ما هیچ چیزی نمیخوایم فقط بتونیم حق زیستن داشته باشیم حق حرف زدن داشته باشیم و اون عقلت کوچیکی که هستیم حداقل بتونیم با هم متحد باشیم و بتونیم الان جون یک نفر رو نجات بدیم امیدوارم که بتونیم کارزار خوب باشیم و به سهيل بتونیم کمک کنیم امروز خیلی ممنون علی شریفی واقعا دستتون در نکنه ممنون از خوبتاتون فکر کنم الان شاهین شاهین محمدی دوست دارین شما بیاین صحبت کنین مجددا در رابطه با همین کمپین و وضعیت سهيل اگر اوکی باشه که می هفت شاهین محمدی آن نکس و تا شاهین محمدی میاد بذارین من یه پیامی بخونم از رابن بلومنر Uh, while uh, before we have Shahin Mohammadi join us uh, now uh, to discuss uh, uh, Sohail Arabi's case further, let me read you a message from Robin Blumner, who's the president of uh, the Center for Inquiry and also the executive director of the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. Uh, she's written that the Center for Inquiry stands for reason, science, and secular values around the world. We support Sahel Arabi's right to speak out on behalf of atheism and against theocracy and religious dogma. We support his quest for freedom of conscience, his right to question and criticize religion, and we find his continued confinement and mistreatment for simply exercising uh, that freedom to be an outrage uh, that the world is rightly judging. So that was a message Um, Robin Blumner, uh, president uh, of CFI and also the Richard Dawkins Foundation. 
Uh, thanks a lot, Mariam John. Thank you. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about Sohail. Actually, Sohail, when when he just started to talk about when he just started to be active in about atheism and just uh, do political stuff, he uh, he said that I used to walk beside the prisons, and whenever I was going beside the prisons, I saw the prisoners and. They were in uh, those prisons and those situations. I always cried for them. I, I was always sad for them because uh, it was a sad situation. To talk to my friends uh, about situation of so about situation of prisoners, about situation that they are in, and why they should be in prison because they just talked about their ideas about their. Um, about uh, just they are prison. They are just political prisoners. Why should they be in prison and why should they be in jail? And um, actually, Sohail right now is in fourteenth uh, day of his hunger strike, and he is not in a good situation right now. And he is going to be under his in investigation and for about twenty one days. And uh, in a in an unknown unknown location because he just talked about his situation and the prison situation, and this shouldn't be like that. And this is the worst problem I think that we have in Islamic regime of Iran. Actually, Iran and right now we are seeing lots of movements in Iran. They are people that they show that they don't want Islam and they don't want to be. Muslim, but unfortunately, they are living under those situations and they're living under those uh, problems that Islamic regime is going to make for them. Is going to make for them, and uh, the I think blasphemy shouldn't be. Uh, blasphemy is not a crime. Blasphemy. This we have lots of prisoners in Iran that they have been released. The, those prisoners who have been like kind of criminals and they have been released because of corona situation but not political prisoners and uh, and this is this is something that it needs to be taken into, into consideration the islamic regime also arrested Sohail's mother for a couple of times they she was also under investigation because she just talked about Sohail's situation and I believe, and the and Sohail's mother is not the only mother that have that have been under investigation, that uh, been in prison. We have lots of other mothers, other prisoners that their mothers are in jail, or the, or even the people that the regime has killed, that the regime have killed them, and they are in prison. Their mothers are in prison. Why? Because just they just protested against this 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 situation. And uh, we have to do something. I believe we have to talk. When we talk more about Suhail and when we talk about uh, political prisoners that are, when we talk about these situations that are going to be in the world because of these problems, these, these, uh, these actual religious governments when we talk more it will be much better because these regimes would stop these regimes will stop what what they're doing and i believe it's going to help because when we did this we did this once when sohail was going to be hanged because of uh, insulting insulting uh, those uh, insulting prophet of islam when he was going to be hanged and we started protesting about it and they stopped it, and I believe if we do it more, they will stop these situations. We have we had another prisoner called Ali Reza Shir Muhammad Ali that this that this regime killed him. This regime killed him, and uh, but not direct. He they killed him by two of other criminal prisoners. They told him to attack. This this to Ali Muhammad Ali, and they just killed him. And uh, it's so easy for these or this kind of these kind of governments to kill the people. 
I believe right now there are some people which are waiting. I don't know who is going to be, who is going to talk about Ali Salimi. And uh, I believe uh, someone uh, who is going to let, talk. Uh, I, I have no... Thank you, John. Let me, um, uh, uh, first let's show a video that was sent mm -hmm. to us. Uh, by Nada Peratz Radfrau. She's a feminist and a humanist from the Center for Civil Courage in Croatia. And she's, uh, it, it includes a famous German song that says, Thoughts are free. So let's listen to that first and then go to our next guest. I think uh, the sound is not coming on the video, unfortunately. Um, I think, we, unfortunately, we've we've had uh, video messages from a number of people, um, including um, uh, Nada Perad Radfrau. Uh, we've also had messages from uh, Iman Soleimani Amiri, who's a lawyer and a writer and a critic of Islam. Halal Tahiri from the Middle Eastern Women and Society organization, um, as well as um, um, from Rahila Gupta, who's a writer and an activist, and Peter Tatro, who's a human rights campaigner. Not all our videos are uh, working, and so unfortunately, we're not able to show them live, but we, we will try to make sure they're online at the end of this live protest. Uh, as Milad said, this is the first time there's been an online protest uh, uh, the use of the internet to protest in defense of uh, uh, of a campaign of sorts. And so uh, hopefully there'll be many more of these, especially at a time when uh, we're in lockdown, that we can still continue to campaign on behalf of people and causes that are important and um, particularly causes like that of Sohail Arabi, whose life is um, in danger. I think we, we now have uh, in the studio um, Ali Sharifi. We have a couple of people in the studio. That's wonderful. Welcome to our guests who are here. Uh, can we have Monica Lanfranco? She is uh, the editor of um, Maria Review. She's a, a, a longtime veteran feminist uh, activist and it's wonderful from Italy. It's wonderful uh, to have you here, Monica. Uh, the floor is yours. Hello, Mariama. It's very, very nice to see you. When we see the last time in London on a secular conference, three, three years ago, <clears throat> we all miss you here in Italy because you uh, were invited at uh, 25 years of uh, Marea, so deep in our heart. Uh, briefly um, a short message uh, from Italy because uh, we are as you know in a very big mess uh, about coronavirus uh, and uh, we work uh, online uh, and uh, many people uh, are uh, are losing the work but uh, the the point the the, the main uh, argument about uh, um, freedom of speech uh, and uh, uh, to show solidarity with uh, all people are in jail and persecution about the, um, this team is uh, is important yesterday i wrote uh, an article about the, the last speech of the pope um, as you know, in Italy, we have a, a, a very good Pope uh, compared with, uh, with uh, the, 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 the previous. But um, in the speech of uh, yesterday, the Pope um, put together uh, uh, his uh, deeply sentiment against uh, 
war and abortion. So I had to write a, an article on my blog in the, one of the most important newspapers in Italy called Il Fatto Quotidiano and uh, Micromega to help the Pope to understand that war and abortion in the same frame is, uh, is, is, is a mess. It's impossible for, for human being, for, for, for all uh, women, also uh, women not feminist. So uh, we see that uh, is uh, deeply important to support all the people. Uh, they, they, they risk to lose uh, uh, freedom and life basically only for say the truth and uh, to be free to say i'm not uh, i'm not uh, uh, I, I i don't believe in god and uh, i'm a free thinking a thinker i'm a feminist i'm a lesbian you know we here we are and we hope uh, after the corona uh, we can help each other to improve our freedom and open our mind and other minds in in the heart because uh, the real war is this this is real war people in jail for three thinking and uh, and and three thoughts to help people to be free it's a it's a it's a real a, a horror film but it's not a film it's a reality so uh, I, I thank you and all the people and all people of your team for the huge work you, you, we do for all of us. Thank you, Monica, for being here, for your solidarity and support over the many years. Uh, it's really great to have you here and to see you uh, here. Uh, thank you also for all those who are giving live comments. So uh, I, I appreciate it. I, I'm supposed to be a multitasker. I'm a woman, right? But I find it really difficult. Maybe it's just I'm too old to do this, but I'm finding it really difficult to respond to live comments, bring people in. And that's with uh, Vidu with Sahim uh, Mohammed, you're also helping uh, and all these wonderful guests lined up and activists. So uh, my apologies if I'm not responding to the messages, but I, I think uh, some of them have to do with what people can do. And of course, people uh, can do many things. There's a petition. Uh, there are campaigns for those who are on death row or in prison for blasphemy, uh, not just in Iran, but elsewhere. It's joining those campaigns, continuing to keep the pressure on and ensuring that blasphemy laws are eradicated um, everywhere. As Mim Zivitz just said, end blasphemy laws. That's really important. And also to keep, uh, you know, continuing to use the, the hashtag Free Sohail Arabi, Free Sohail uh, save Sohail and blasphemy laws so we can keep highlighting this issue uh, for today and for, for uh, uh, days to come and hopefully help save Sohail's life and the life of, of many others. Um, we have a few other people in the studio right now. Ali Sharifi is uh, next, I think. Uh, welcome, Ali Sharifi. Um, uh, please feel free to come online if you're in the studio still. Um, and if if Ali Sharifi is not there, we can then maybe uh, speak to Abbas Mohammad Poor, uh, who might be in the studio. Yes, welcome Abbas Mohammad Poor. Uh, thank you. Befarma. Durud bar shuma, madam. Salam arz mikunam khidmat shuma, Maryam Namazi Aziz va binandegan Aziz in barname. Khushalam ke. درخواست منو قبول کردین که در این لایف شرکت کنم و صدای سهیل عربی باشم ما کمپین های رو تشکیل داده بودیم از 17 آگست 2019 در سطح جهان برای دفاع از سهیل عربی و اینکه صدای سهیل عربی و سایر زندانی های سیاسی و عقیدتی باشیم و من این مطلب رو میخواستم میگم که سهیل عربی فقط یک نمونه از صدها هزار زندانی سیاسی که توی زندانهای جمهوری اسلامی الان داره شکنجه میشه فقط یک نمونه از این هزاران زندانی متاسفانه چند ساعت پیش ما دوباره خبردار شدیم که توی این یک هفته اخیر سهیل عربی 
برای دومین بار به بهانه رسیدگی به وضعیت پزشکیش به قرارگاه سار الله سپاه دوباره منتقل شده و بازم مورد تهدید و بازجویی قرار گرفته و من اینجا اه اه به زبان فارسی از تمامی مردم تقاضا میکنم به خصوص از فعالینی که در خارج از ایران زندگی میکنن اینو در نظر بگیرن مطمئن باشن قطعا اگر ما الان توی ایران بودیم و اینطوری میتونستیم در مورد آتیستی جنبش خدا ناباوری صحبت بکنیم بعد عقاید خودمون رو بگیم قطعا ما هم یکی مثل سوهل عربی بودیم که الان توی زندان ها داشتیم زج میکشیدیم و شکنجه میشدیم و اینه که نباید بی تفاوت باشیم باید صدای سوهل ها باشیم حالا خوشبختانه با این وضعیتی که الان پیش اومده حالا این فضای مجازی انقدر قدرتمند شده که میتونیم بازم صدامونو رساتر و کوبندتر به گوش جهانیان برسونیم و من دوباره درخواست میکنم که همین برنامه ها رو همه ما فعالین بازم انجام بدیم بازم همچین لایو های رو بذاریم بعد توی شورای مرکزی اکس مسلم بعد از میلاد رسای منش نستران بودرزی شما توی انگلستان و ما هم توی آلمان همچین کمپین رو بازم به قوت ادامه بدیم و بتونیم که صدای سهیل عربی باشیم و اینکه با کمک همدیگه بتونیم سهیل عربی رو نجات بدیم ممنونم مرسی من دیگه بیشتر از این وقت رو نمیگیرم خیلی ممنون عباس عزیز آقا خسته نباشین عباس چه سپوک about the fact that there are so many other political prisoners in Iran as well uh, under very serious conditions uh, and that it's important that we continue to work uh, for their release, both that of Sohail um, Arabi as well as uh, others who are in prison right now. Khili Mamnoon Abbas John. We now have uh, Mercedes Qaidi in the studio. Mercedes Qaidi is a former political prisoner. Both her brothers and her sister-in-law were executed uh, during the 80s in Iran. Uh, she is the spokesperson of uh, um, a London spokesperson of Iran Tribunal, and she's here now to give us a message as well. Mercedes Qaidi, as is Khushramadi, the farmer. من با درود به شما و مریم نمازی عزیز و با تشکر از اسم اکس مسلم بریتانیا که همچین کاری رو پیش میبره و تمام کسایی که در اتاق هستن من میخوام اول با فرنگیس مزنو مادر سهل عربی صحبت کنم و بهش بگم فرنگیس جان میدونم دوران سختی رو داری پشت سر میزنی ولی جز مادرهایی هستی که لحظه به لحظه ما رو در جریان وضعیت سهل عزیز قرار میدیم و نقش خانواده ها در این شرایط سخت که میدونیم که من به عنوان یک زندانی الان میدونم که زندان در چه شرایطی وجود داره زندان جمهوری اسلامی هیچ وقت بهداشت نداشت هیچ وقت امکانات غذایی نداره هیچ وقت نمیتونه در این شرایط که کرونا تمام دنیا رو گرفته و زندانیان رو درگیر نکنه و به خصوص زندانیانی مثل سهل عربی که با تمام وجودش که در شما متفاوتا صحبت شد سهل واقعا مریضه خیلی از زندانیان مریضن تحت شکنجه های شدید رژیم قرار گرفتن فقط برای عقیده شون سهل عربی به خاطر به عنوان که یه اتیست به اینکه به خدا اعتقاد نداره و به یک دنیای بهتری اعتقاد داره و بیش از چندین سال زیر پشار شدید قرار داره و در این شرایط در نظر بگیرین که سهل در این شرایط سخت حتی نمیتونه کنار دختر کچولشم باشه و علاوه بر اون ما میدونیم برای فرنگیس مظلوم چقدر سخته فرنگیس تمام این خطری که هر روز باید بره تو محیط های زندان و دنبال پسرش و ببینید چه خبر تازی رو میگیره ما در این شرایط علاوه بر این که باید کمپین های بزرگی در حمایت به آزادی تمامی زندانیان و به خصوص زندانیان سیاسی که برنامه کلان داریم ولی یادمون نره حمایت هایی که باید از خانوادی زندانیان سیاسی خانوادی زندانیان سیاسی الان در بدترین شرایط قرار دارن و من به عنوان یکی از زندانیان سابق باید خطاب به همه بگم 
همیشه رژیم جمهوری اسلامی در هر بحران هایی که درگیر میشه اولین سرکوبگراش بچه های زندان هستن چون زندان بچه های زندان در بسته در اختیارشون هست و من از روز اول میدونستم که میگفت زندانیا را آزاد میکنن ولی من میدونستم که شامل سهل عربی جعفر از زنزاده آتنا و, و زندانی های دیگه که الان فرصت نیست شامل اینها نخواهد شد و ما میبینیم به بحانه های متفاوت خانواده ها رو میکشونن و جواب منفی میدن ولی ما هیچ انتظاری از یک رژیم جنایتکار اسلامی نداریم چهل سال داره جنایت میکنه چهل سال داره م... عزیزای ما رو به خاطر افکارشون داره اعدام میکنه ما با فشار خودمون با فشار مردم با فشار خانواده های دادخوا من مطمئنم فرنگیز کاری که داره میکنه در ادامه اهداف پسرش و روزانه داده اهداف پسرش رو برای آزادش داره تبلیغ میکنه و لحظه نمیذاره که دنیا بیخبر بمونه از وضعیت سهل و سهل عربی هایی که الان در زندان هستن باز هم مریم نمازی خیلی ممنون که این فرصت رو به من دادین و من اینجا میگم فرنگیس عزیز همه ما در کنار هستیم برای آزادی سهل عربی و تمام زندانی هم سیستی. خیلی ممنون مرسد قایدی واقعا خسته نباشید و ممنون که با ما بودید و با امید آزادی سهل عربی و تمام زندانیان سیاسی تو ایران و کسایی که در سراسر دنیا به خاطر کفگویی ارتداد به خاطر عقایدشون و ابراز عقیدشون تحت شکنجن زندانیان و حکم اعدام هم دارن به زیر حکم اعدام به سر میبرن ممنون That was Mercedes Qaidi She was talking about uh, the situation in prisons Also I think one of the important points she raised is the fact that uh, the mothers of uh, political prisoners and the uh, situation that they face You know, Sohail Arabi's mother has been arrested She has spoken out in his defense nonetheless He's been carrying that torch for his freedom, as have many mothers of political prisoners uh, in the country. The mothers of Khawaran uh, is one great example. Mercedes' mother was a mother of Khawaran who recently, she recently passed away. Mothers who are demanding accountability and justice for their children who've been either killed and executed by the regime or who are now languishing in uh, Iran's prisons. Uh, we have in the studio others uh, now uh, with us. Uh, we have Shah Parak Shajari Zadeh. Welcome, Shah Parak. Please uh, join us. While Shah Parak is joining us, I'd like to read you a message in defense of Sohail that has been sent by Sadiq Samad, who is the coordinator of ex-Muslims of Tamil Nadu in India. Um, he says, we have experienced the cruelty of Islam in 2017 and after the murder of Farooq, uh, who's an Indian atheist, uh, most of us here are not ready to come out in public. So we can only send this message. We can understand the pain of Sohail Arabi and his family um, and ex-Muslims of Tamil Nadu, India, supports this protest. Thank you to the ex-Muslims of Tamil Nadu for your solidarity and we look forward to working with you over many years uh, uh, to come. Thank you. Uh, Shah Parak, uh, welcome and please take the floor. Welcome, Shah Parak. Welcome. Be farmain. Khush umadin. Merci, Azizam. Do you want me to talk in English or in Farsi? Uh, you can talk in both, either, whatever you're comfortable. Be uh, be uh, um, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me um, in this conversation. I'm uh, My English is not that good at uh, first. I'm so sorry. Um, if I can talk uh, fluently, um, like many other Iranians, I'm so worried uh, for Sohail's uh, life. We all know his life is in danger. But uh, you were a political. You 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 used to be an activist, 
uh, and I was for a while and we all know uh, f when you face justice, injustice, uh, when you face injustice in prison and you don't have anyone to help you, there's no uh, legal system, there's no law to protect your rights. Uh, the only thing that we have uh, inside when we are in um, uh, captivity, when we are inside prison, is our life. The only thing that we have. This is the only thing, uh, the only fight you have, your life. And that's why many um, um, prisoners of conscience in Iran decide to uh, go on uh, hunger strike, like other dictatorship, re dictatorship regimes. And um, Sohail uh, has has been proving that he's a free soul and he's, he's so brave. All Iranians know him for his bravery, also, also, uh, also his mom. Um, they are so brave and they're not afraid of the government. I remember when uh, when the uh, interrogator interrogated me. Um, he wanted to pin uh, out of my uh, statements, uh, out of my answers. He he wanted to pin uh, pin me with being an atheist, and uh, I remember I was afraid, and uh, I I told him um, frankly that uh, no, I am not an in atheist, but. I knew I was I wasn't um, a Muslim. I knew that um, I was an ex-Muslim, but I lied. And many people uh, lie during in, in interrogations because they know they're gonna face um, uh, death if if the the judges could prove that you're not a, you're not a Muslim anymore. Uh, but Sohail uh, was always a brave soul. And she, he wasn't afraid of uh, like that. Uh, this is this is the uh, greatest thing about this this man that he knows what he's doing and he knows um, his voice for many Iranian and um, he believes in his in his fight and um, like him, all the Iranian, all the people who. Who who don't who who don't want to practice Islam? This is our right. Uh, th this is not something that we we have been chosen for uh, for ourselves. And uh, but uh, he's a voice for um, for many Iranian. And right now his life is in danger. And this is our um, I guess uh, responsibility to be his voice. Many, you know, in many cases, uh, prisoners um, had died inside prison uh, after being on uh, long hunger strikes. And this is our responsibility uh, to prevent uh, this incident for, um, for Sohail. And um, I admire him and I know um, um, in many cases, I know for sure, my friend, for my friends, Moshgan, Yasaman, Monire, Saba, they told, they told them uh, frankly that we're not gonna put bail uh, for your release. We're not gonna release you even on furlough, um, um, despite the coronavirus spread inside prison. They, they told them um, that we're not gonna let you go even on furlough. And uh, but um, Sohail is fighting for his life, and um, I guess this is our responsibility to make awareness um, in the world and be be his voice. Uh, I hope we can do something for our friends inside prisons, also Sohail. Thank you so much uh, for your words and your acts of solidarity and your continued activism. It's it's um, wonderful to have you here. Thank and you. Uh, also for all your campaigning work against compulsory veiling laws in Iran. Uh, all of these uh, issues are so linked because it's all linked to uh, people living in, the, in a theocracy, the Islamic regime of Iran, where they cannot breathe, they cannot dress how they want, they cannot think how they want. They cannot love how they want, um, and and so 
uh, this resistance that takes place from uh, women like yourself uh, and all the others who we've had, other speakers and guests we've had, as well as uh, people like Sohail Arabi, really the, the courage and bravery is what is uh, keeping, uh, you know, a sort of humanity's flame alive, really, in conditions where it's so dark, it's so bleak. Imagine being in the in a prison of the Islamic regime of Iran. I mean, the country itself is a big prison for 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 many. Uh, but in that situation, still speaking, still standing strong, I think that takes a special kind of courage and bravery. And it's really important that we continue to support um, Sohail and, and many like him. Thank you, Shalpari. Can I say something to Farangis? Yes, please. Farangis is uh, Sohail's mom. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Farangis Jun, um, um, خیلی کارت ارزش منده همه مردم ایران مبارزه و فعالیتی که از اول برای آزادی پسرت انجام دادی رو دارن میبینن خیلی از خانواده های سیاسی شجاعت تو رو نداشتن که صدای فرزندانشون باشن ولی تو زندگی خودت رو عزیزم به خطر انداختی برای نجات پسرت و به صف مبارزین پیوستی ما هممون دوست داریم و تو این مبارزه ای که داری میکنی بدون که تنها نیستی و در کنار سهیل نام در کنار تمام آزادی خواهان هستش و همه ساپورتت میکنیم Thank you فرنگیز جون We are all going to support you and we appreciate your fight for freedom and also for Sohail. Hi, Mariam, uh, you're on mute, sorry. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I guess I muted myself without realizing. <laughs> uh, so uh, we now have uh, Behnam Ibrahim Zadeh in uh, the studio. He is one of uh, 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 the uh, activists uh, in, in Iran, and uh, he's also a former political prisoner. It's such a pleasure, Behnan Aziz, Baran Khoshumadid, Khili Khoshalim Ke Shoma Bama Hasid, Befarmain Va Sohbatotuno, Behnan Ebrahim Zade Khodeshun, Yez, and then his Yesi Sabeh Hastan, Baham Bandi Sabeh Sohail Arabi Hastan. You know, being Yidisian, Baran Begam Ke Behnan Ebrahim Zade was a cellmate of Sohail Arabis as well. Uh, so we were very happy to have him here. Welcome, Befarmain. سلام عرض میکنم مریم عزیز و به کسایی که در این لایف هستن و دوست دستم در کنند من واقعا حیجان شده شدم که برای اولین بار تونستم در همچین لایبی اونم کنار شما عزیز که ساله هاست شما را از نزدیک میشناسم و با فعالیت های خوب و مسمر سمر شما آشنا هستم واقعا خوشحالم و حیجان زده شدم بله اشاره کردید من به عنوان یکی از همبندیان سابق سوهیل عزیز در بند 350 زندان اوین من مدت های زیادی همبند بودم و افتخار اینو داشتم که در کنار بزرگانی مثل سوهیل و دیگر اجزان باشم اما به عنوان انسانی که سالها منم رنج زندان رو کشیدم و زندان های مختلف رو از نزدیک دیده و لمس کردم و در این مورد هم هزینه های زیادی دادم میخوام بگم که در وضعیت کنونی شرایط زندان به هیچ عنوان و خوب نیست و نگران کننده است و به عنوان یک زندانی منم نگرانم و خوشحالم که این فرصت رو به من دادید که تونستم صدای سویل باشم و در کنار شما باشم 
از همه کسایی که امروز و الان صدای منو میشنان میخوام مثل همه کارزاره هایی که دوستان ما را انداختم و منم به عنوان عضوی که افتخار اینو داشتم در کنار کارزان ها و کمپین های مختلف همین الان قرار گرفتم میخوام که در بلند کردن صدای سوهیل و در کارزاره هایی که را انداخته شده شرکت کنن و فعالانه وسیعا جمهوری اسلامی رو تحت فشار قرار بدن چرا که جان سویل عربی و سویل عربا واقعا در خطره و از اینجا میخوام تشکر کنم از صدای رسا و شجاعت خانم فرنگیس مظلوم که شجاعانه مثل خیلی از مادره دیگه به میدان اومد و واقعا شجاعتش نستودنی است و میخوام که دیگر خانواده زندانی سیسی کسانی که هنوز خیلی گمنامند و ترس از رعب و وحشت جمهوری اسلامی این امکان و این فضا رو بهشون نمیده عزیزانه استمداد میخوام که صداشون رو به گوش مجامع بین المللی برسانن و صدای عزیزانشون ما هنوز خیلی از دستگیر شدگان آبان ماه رو داریم که صداشون به جایی نرسیده و اینقدر خانواده تحت فشارن که نمیتونن صدای عزیزانشون باشن در حال خیلی خوشحالم مریم عزیز که این فرصت برای من مهیا شد میگم که واقعا هیجان شده شدم و خیلی خوشحالم دارم پیگیر میشم و دنبال میکنم برنامه های خوب شما را از همه عزیزان سپاس گذارم امیدوارم بتونیم صدای سوهیل و سوهیل ها باشیم همچنان که عباس عزیزم شارکت این جمله رو بگم که سوهیل امروز به یک مرکز امنیتی بسیار خطرناک که سپاه منتقل شده با وضعیت خونریزی که ریاهاش و معدش پیدا کرده وضعیتش خیلی نگران کنند است ما مستقیم با فرنگیس عزیز در تماس هستیم نگران های اونو میبینیم این وظیفه همه ماست که صدای سوهیل باشن ممنونم که وقت به من دادیم واقعا خیلی ممنون منم واقعا مشتاق دیدار شما و خیلی خوشحالم که به هم رسیدیم اینجا و همدیگر رو تونستیم ببینیم ممنون از ایامتون و فعالیتاتون در دفاع از سهر و دیگر زندانیان سیاسی خیلی ممنون و به امید دیدار به زودی بعد از این کرونا ویروس Thank you for that wonderful message uh, Uh, now, I think we have uh, more people in the studio. I, um, it, 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 I think Halima Salat, who's a poet and ex-Muslim voices of Somalia, she's here with us. Welcome, Salima. Halima, good to see you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm getting tongue-tied with this live program. I thought Walid was going to do this, and I was feeling really confident. that he was going to make it brilliant, and I'm really sorry if I'm messing things up. Welcome, Halima. I, I think your mic is muted, Halima. Your mic is muted. Yes. Hi. Hi, Mariam. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to be here. Um, I just want to begin at least by sending some sort of a direct message to Suhail Arabi, he's an icon. Um, a lot of us are aware of his bravery um, to say that it's a message of solidarity just to say while the Sharia prisons of, uh, while the Sharia prison corridors of the Iranian regime might be sucking the life out of those with free minds and who stand in bravery, while your body may be suffering in pain of what they're doing to you. I celebrate your free mind for what it is and remaining intact as it is. And because of that, I wrote a, I wrote a poem. It doesn't have a name, but <clears throat> it goes like this. The theater of the absurd in rhythmically choreographed rituals of bending and bowing and scratching heads on the floor. forcing religious crazy making down the throats of free thinkers, indoctrinating young minds to perpetuate a repetition of archaic nonsense, the aim being to repeat and repeat and repeat to the next generation, the absurdities picked up from power hungry con men, self-serving in their ancient conquests, spreading fear and damnation to the nations of the time. The erasure of the female power by covering in black garb the sparkle of her soul. These a continuation of ancient patriarchal social order to erase the feminine shine as if it's yours to hide. In this theatrics of the masculine God, immortalized in doctrines 
passed on via shady books full of shady myths exchanged through generations of blind faith, the ultimate tool of mind control. Do not think, do not question. It is so, it was so, it has been so. So what? The clasps of religious absurdities are crumbling quickly these days in the minds of the free thinkers, the rebels, the dissenters, those of us who are living. These times of the here and now, the irrelevance of such nonsense brings to sharp focus the bullshit of ancient myth-making and thank fuck for that. And I'm going to read another one called Allah is big in the Middle East. <clears throat> Allah is big in the Middle East. While in the minds of its free thinkers, his funeral celebration is well underway. Allah forgot about the Middle East, abandoned in his last to-do list, living only in the desperation of hearts ravaged by broken systems and inhumane authorities. The Allah men shoving and shuffling around their almighty, sucking the blood, sweat and muscle tension of the vulnerable, yet braver than brave dissenters. Give your life for Allah needs to feel important. They loop and repeat. Allah abandons the East while sitting in the highest throne in a golden pedestal, rationing bless blessings as if he owns the place. Let's kill Allah in the East and everywhere. He has no use anyway. Planning Allah's funeral should be fun. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that wonderful poetry. Um, as always, brilliant. Thank you, Halima Tala. It's so great to have you uh, join us. That was amazing. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, how, are you doing? how are you doing? I'm very good. I'm very good. I just want to say, uh, Hali Halima, that was absolutely amazing. Uh, I remember watching you in uh, Amsterdam, and that gave me chills. And uh, I, it was like a sort of out of body experience uh, listening to your words and the way you say it. And just again now, uh, you you are super talented with words. And honestly, every time I listen to you, I feel like I've uh, just transcended beyond this dimension. So I love love your work, honestly, amazing. Oh, I think you're on mute. Oh, oh, thank you so much. It's really nice to see you guys. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Waleed, did you want to say a few words as well uh, now that you're here? Yeah. <laughs> now that I've been hiding. I've been hiding. No, no. I just want to say firstly, I think, uh, Miriam, you're doing an absolutely fantastic job. I think there's so many people that have, that have come on. And uh, yeah, can we... Can we Give it up for Marion, please, because this is the first time doing this, and she, I think she's doing an amazing job, an amazing job. Uh, not to be underestimated, it's, it's a lot of pressure being live. Um, I've done it a couple of times, so I'm used to it, but um, I think we've had so many people that have come on and shared their experience from different angles, uh, from, from different perspectives, and everyone in the comment section is super engaged, and mm. um, every, everyone is participating. And I think, hopefully, hopefully, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think someone else was mentioning it before, that we were kind of close to... Uh, raising the profile of Suhail Arabi, but then there was the mm -hmm. Brexit thing in the UK, then now it's the Corona mm -hmm. thing. So unfortunately, it's like one thing after another, some, you know, mm -hmm. things keep pushing it on, on the back burner. But regardless of what happens on these sort of, you know, things that are things that are out of our control, we should keep the effort up and mm -hmm. we should continue to raise a, a awareness because when that opportunity comes, we will be ready yeah. about Suhail's yeah. situation. Uh, on an international level so when the situation comes we're ready to do what we have to do um so i, I think i think it's uh, really really important that we keep this we keep this going and uh i think you know every, everyone's doing a fantastic job so maria you're doing a great job um who would you like to have do we have um hamid would is i think he's been waiting patiently would you like to have yes. him on yes please lovely Hi, Hamid. Hello, Hamid uh, Jamali. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you uh, from the Council of Ex-Muslims of Scandinavia. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> yes, correctly. Thanks. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I'm sorry for for my bad picture. Perhaps uh, I was at work and I didn't have a chance to listen to the rest of contributors, unfortunately. Uh, so I don't exactly know. I'm gonna watch this uh, video later on YouTube to find out what people have said so far. But uh, I wanted to just uh, share my opinion and my thoughts uh, regarding Sohail. I I believe he's doing uh, a very very big job, and uh, he is like uh, a general. Uh, of this huge army of atheists and he's fate, face to face with the most evil government in the world perhaps <laughs> and uh, he is fighting uh, barehandedly and uh, perhaps uh, it's not easy to understand people who haven't lived in iran it's 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 difficult for them to understand how uh, how risky is it is to send out letters from a prison in Iran, to send out voice messages to the public inside a prison in Iran. And he is taking a, such a huge risk. And his mother also is taking a huge risk. It's like, it's like a two-man army mm. <laughs> fighting against the, the, the most heinous uh, government. And the... Uh, they are doing this um, so bravely. Um, so, and recently, for I don't know for for I don't know for how many times he has been on hunger strike, but he went uh, on hun hunger strike uh, strike again recently. And uh, I believe he hoped uh, for his action to make a huge vo a huge noise in the world. Uh, because I don't know. I think I think uh, the, the the hunger strike is the biggest step that a prisoner can take. I mean, it's it's his only weapon, his health and his life is his only weapon, and uh, he's uh, taking this huge risk. He's taking. He's putting his body, his health, in a huge risk, hoping for this to come out very very loud in this world, in the world of atheists, people like us. So I, I think he expected a, a huge uh, response from us, a huge support from us. Well, I, I know and I appreciate whatever has been done so far. We know that if, if it wasn't for his bravery, his mother's bravery, and all this international and huge number of support from all over the world, if it wasn't for these actions, perhaps the Islamic regime in Iran has succeeded to destroy him, to, to kill him. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, they, have been, they haven't been able to do that to him. But I still, uh, and, and of course, yeah, we, we did a huge thing, we did last summer, we arranged a big protest around the globe, and I don't know, maybe 40 cities or something. And uh, mm. people gathered. We, 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 we created a petition that has more than 100,000 signs on it. It's huge. I mean, uh, maybe I haven't seen such a thing before, in, at least in, in the atheist world and regarding atheist prisoners. Uh, so the campaign has been successful. But still, I'm frustrated not seeing more people with us. Uh, I expect our voice and Sohail's voice to be heard more loudly, more clearly. I mean, as I said, he is such an important person in this fight. He is such an important, as I said, like, like, a, like a general of this army of Iranian atheists who are fighting against uh, the Islamic government. And uh, he deserves more attention. He deserves more support. So there are uh, many atheists uh, in the world who have louder voices, who have more, uh, more equipment, more, more media in their hands. They have millions of, I don't know, followers, listeners, 
and I expect them to to pay attention to this. I mean, I maybe maybe my voice isn't enough uh, to reach the the governments of the world, to 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 the politicians of the world, and ask them to help us in this matter. But uh, I know that there are much more famous atheists in the world, and I humbly expect them and ask them to pay attention to this case, to pay attention to Sohail Arabi's uh, health and his situation. He has been uh, in prison for more than seven years. Every day his life is in danger. Every day, if the government could have killed him, they have definitely done it, but they have could, they couldn't have, um, fortunately. So, yeah, that's my <laughs> frustration that I wanted to share with you guys. And I uh, see this incredible job that today is we are doing. And we have been doing this. As I said, last summer we did a huge job together with uh, tons of uh, ex-Muslim councils around the world and uh, the Atheist Republic, whoever joined this campaign. And uh, we are continuing to this fight. But I hope for more support. And uh, I really wish that this uh, Sohail Arabi's case uh, comes to a wonderful conclusion. And this is like, could be a very, very, very important victory for not only Iranian atheists, but the atheists around the world. Just it's, it, it's going to be a big defeat for, for one of the worst. Uh, theocracies of the world, the most the, the, the biggest dictatorship, dictatorships of the world. So thank you, and I'm sorry that I spoke too much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was, that was uh, really, really good. I think you've actually encapsulated it really well when you said that he's mm -hmm. fighting barehanded against one of the most mm -hmm. tyrannical regimes in the world. And if they wanted him dead, I mean, he would have been dead, but his, his own mental strength and physical strength to put his body through a hunger strike you know his mother is fighting as well i mean these are the things that we kind of overlook i mean to a guy but he's just a lone man in a cage and mm -hmm. he himself doesn't know what's going to happen the next day and the day after so it takes huge courage and mental strength to continue what he's doing i mean he could have easily thrown in the towel none of us would have said oh he's weak but he's a true hero on so many different levels so thank you so much for your eloquent words. Thank you so much, Hamid. Thank you, too. Yeah, thank you. And I think one of the important... Uh, um, cases, up next... Uh, we, yeah. oh, sorry, one of the important things that please, Hamid please, mentioned please. Is, is the fact that he was on death row initially. He was sentenced to death yeah. initially. And it was then changed to uh, seven plus years. And after that, he got an additional three years. So it, it, this sort of uh, activism and you know highlighting these cases does work. And it's important, mm. it, it does save lives. And I think that is very important. And now given his situation, the fact that he needs urgent medical care, he's on hunger strike, um, and that they keep taking him for additional interrogations because he's speaking out, uh, putting him under more pressure, that it's important that we keep the pressure on. Yeah, exactly, exactly, fantastic. Um, we have, uh, I believe, Iman in the studio. Is a uh, on? Welcome. We have uh, Iman Soleimani Amiri. He's a lawyer and a critic of Islam, and it's uh, really good to have you here with us, Iman, uh, to defend Sahel Al Arabi and to speak about uh, this case and uh, the work uh, that you're doing uh, on uh, behalf of blasphemers and apostates as well. Um, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan Damazi Aziz, and thank you for your support of all of the listeners and listeners of this program. I don't have any more than the first person. Of course, this is the first person who can be able to do it in the same way that the first person can be اولیه ترین حقوق انسانی توسط رژیم های دینی علال خصوص رژیم تمامیت خواه و واپسگرای جمهوری اسلامی 
که اندیشه های دین اسلام رو ترویج میکنه زیر سوال میره و منتقدین این دین کسانی که در حوزه های مختلف اهم از حقوق انسان ها اهم از مسائل اسلام سیاسی و دیگر مسائل سعی میکنن فعالیت بکنن توسط این رژیم بازداشت میشن و متاسفانه از حقوق اولیه یک زندانی هم برخوردار نیستن چرا که از زبان و قلم اونها همیشه احساس خطر شده لذا وظیفه ما هست که به عنوان انسان هایی که اعتقاد داریم به مبانی حقوق بشر به آزادی بیان و عقیده در کنار این عزیزان بیستیم و اگر صدایی هم داریم بتوانیم از طریق ایجاد کمپین هایی که شما بزرگواران زحمتش رو میکشید و دوستان دیگر به مراجع به نوعی حقوق بشری یا دولت ها انتقال بدیم که بتوانند این حق اولیه انسان ها رو حداقل در مناسبات بین المللی خودشون رعایت بکنن و ما شاهد چونین فجایعی در درون زندان ها نباشیم که انسانی در قرن 21 به خاطر آزادی بیان و عقیدش که در ماده 18 اعلامی جهانی حقوق بشر هم بدان تصریح شده و فارغ از بحث اعلامیه به عنوان حق اساسی هر انسانی هست در زندان باشه و زیر فشار و شکنجه های جسمانی و روانی برای خودش و خانوادش ممنون ایمان عزیز واقعا خسته نباشین از فعالیت های خودتون و اینکه اومدین اینجا و از این کمپین حمایت کردین واقعا خسته نباشین مرسی که با ما بودید انجام وظیفه بود خانم نمازی بزرگوار امیدوارم من به عنوان یک عضو کوچک از نهاد ایکس مسلم هم بتوانیم راه شما بزرگواران رو با الگو برداری که انجام میدیم ادامه بدیم و حقوق انسان ها در اولویت اول ما قرار بید. خیلی ممنون ولی فکر نکنم بزرگ فارم ولی خب مرسی نباشین مرسی Who do we have next? Um, uh, we have uh, either Jimmy or we have Shab- Shab- Shabnam, I think. I think. I think okay, it's... great. Can I just do a quick, uh, read a quick uh, message that we have from... Uh, so I had read some messages from various people who uh, sent solidarity messages to Sohail Arabi, uh, including Robin Blumner from the Center for Inquiry and the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science, Cold Black Sisters, Pragna Patel. Uh, we had Dia Khan, who's a filmmaker, Nazanin Ashin Jam, who's a human rights activist, Mariama Hele Lucas, who's from Secularism as a Women's Issue. I read out their statements. There's also a statement from Gita Sotgal. She's the founder of Secularism, um, the Center for Secular Space, sorry, and also a spokesperson for One Law for All. She sent in a picture of Rosemary for Remembrance, and she said, for atheists and all political prisoners in Iran, Sohail, we remember you, we call for your freedom, we stand with you, and the people of Iran protesting against a cruel government which has put their lives at risk. We look forward to the day that you are free. That was from Gita Sohgal. Absolutely. So, um, who is up next? We can have uh, Shabnam. I believe she's been waiting patiently. Hi. So we can't hear you. Shabnam, then, Mr. Kim, microphone to mute. No, there's no sound coming in. Motasifone sedane miyad az mikrofone tun. Do you want to go in and come out again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She leaves mm-hmm. and ends and ends again. In the meantime, we've got Jimmy. If if, if you want, um, we can have Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Van Gash. Yeah, we've got Jimmy uh, ready. He's uh, with the Council of Ex-Muslims Jimmy? of Britain. Welcome, Jimmy. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Excellent. So it just seems that Perfect. you couldn't hear people beforehand. Mariam, this is the first time I've seen you speaking in um, Iranian. Is that you were speaking in? What language was that? Farsi. Farsi, okay, cool. I speak Pashto, it sounds a little bit similar. So, yeah. Um, thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for inviting me on. Pleasure, pleasure. What I wanted to say, or just spend a bit of time talking about, is the importance of sexual minorities uh, in terms of uh, enunciating and coming forth and speaking out 
uh, against uh, blasphemy laws. Yeah, um, and so I think sometimes what we can find is actually uh, it, it seems that if you're uh, somebody who's a sexual minority who is gay and you might actually be Muslim, you think that the battle around blasphemy laws has nothing to do with you because you're actually Muslim and so you wouldn't be blaspheming about Islam anyway. So there's no need for you to stand up in support of the abolition of blasphemy laws because it's not going to impact you in one way or another. Uh, and I think, you know, when we think about uh, is the sound okay? I'm getting a lot of echo on my side. It's okay for you guys? Okay. So I think when we think about um, when we think about human rights, it's important not to think about human rights as only impacting us as individuals. We have to think about human rights impacting all of humanity and campaign for rights that are not necessarily rights that impact us uh, uh, immediately as individuals. So first of all, I think it's important to look at how Islam does treat sexual minorities anyway. So if you're a gay person, Fidu, could you go on to mute? It's your feedback that you can hear in my ears. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's great. I can I can hear nothing now. Um, so uh, as I was saying, I think it's important to think about how Islam or the Islamist narrative does treat sexual minorities anyway. So you might feel that you're Muslim and actually that blasphemy law doesn't apply to you because you're Muslim anyway. But we know that actually if you're gay, uh, for example, and you are Muslim, often just the fact that you are gay is seen as blasphemous or anathema to Islam anyway. Yeah, so I think sometimes we can think we can hide in the shadows as a gay Muslim and actually not be impacted by blasphemy laws, but it's important to understand that often there's a forced apostasy for gay people. People are frequently saying, even in the 21st century, you cannot be gay and Muslim. You have to pick one or the other. And if you're going to pick being gay, well, then you're not pick being Muslim, so you are by default then an apostate, and therefore you are subjected to all of the rules that an apostate would be subjected to. Or conversely, if you try and have the audacity to say, well, actually, no, I am Muslim and I am gay and it's possible for me to be a gay Muslim and celebrate being a gay Muslim. Well, then that is seen as blasphemy because what you're trying to do is take something that historically has always been uh, deemed as a sin within Islam and one of the major sins, you know, in terms of sodomy. Uh, and then what the scene is, what you're trying to do is now revise the religion or do bidder, you know, bring in some new innovative technique to try and legitimize your sin, which is homosexuality, and making it be okay. And we know that these Islamist uh, regimes are not okay with that. So I think the, the illusion, and that's what it is, that if you are in a gay Muslim or somebody who's a sexual minority who identifies as Muslim, that you are safe from these very same laws that persecute blasphemers and apostates, it's important to understand that it's completely an illusion and it's not true. And that's my first point. The second point is that even if it was true that you were not impacted by uh, the Islamist narrative around apostasy and blasphemy, Proceeding to only navigate and champion human rights that only further and benefit you is not a commitment to humanity. That's not a commitment to human rights at all. That's actually just a commitment to yourself. And it's quite a self-centered way of being. 100%. I mean, that, that's, that's a, a very good point. Often we can only look at the rights that affect us individually and think, oh, well, as long as it, you know, it doesn't affect me, I guess I'm fine. But those, th the very same mechanism, the very same reasoning that has denied someone else can tomorrow deny you rights, and then you find yourself in the very same boat that you know someone else was in. So I, th I think if, if I think it's a very good point, we all have to be uh, consistent across the board and say, well, if, for example, I'm not gay, I'm not Iranian, I'm not you know a sexual minority in or you know in this country or any other country, but I see the the the, the venomous reasoning behind someone being denied those rights, and tomorrow I find myself in that very same camp so i think that's a that's a, that's a very um very good point and often um i think i think faye was saying this before that when she uh, mentions this point to um some atheists from you know sort of uh, non-muslim backgrounds they often say well he shouldn't have broken the law then should don't you know why the, why did he do that 
Well, I mean, if we want to, I mean, we, we mentioned this before, um, me, you, me and you, Jimmy, that we often talk about, well, why did the women in this country break the law when they wanted to vote or when, when they wanted to have the same rights as men? They, they should have just known better and, uh, you know, stuck in their boxes. You know, why did they do that? Now, obviously, we, with hindsight, we can say what they did was right. So I think there are similar parallels to be said about, you know, Sahel and other people like him as well in in the, those sort of the, theocratic countries. It's a really good point, actually, that the struggle for human rights is a history of um, breaching legal, le breaching legality. It actually, you could sum it as a as a history of illegality, like people mm. taking illegal action to win the human rights. So when we think about um, apartheid South Africa, there's a whole history there of breaching um, the laws that were set down for yeah. black people. When we think about the civil rights movement for black people. In America, there's a whole history there of people breaching the social norms and the legal statuses uh, that are there. And also the same thing for the LGBT movement. When we look at the, the struggle for gay human rights, you know, there's this consistent breaching of what the law is. And, and we know that under Sharia, if actually uh, two gay men are going to live and have a relationship together, uh, in the same way that a heterosexual couple can do so, well, then that's going to involve breaking the law in very mm. many ways. And so this idea that somebody shouldn't shouldn't have broken the law and therefore then they wouldn't have been persecuted, well, actually, if the law is infringing on somebody's human rights, you know, and, and we have a charter that tells us what what would be considered as, as a contravening those rights, well, then it's not justification to maintain the law, it's actually justification to adjust that law and maintain people's civil liberties. 100%, 100%. Jimmy, uh, thank you so much. I'm not sure if you to hang around or not, but I'll try, I'll try and bring some other people in, into the conversation. So Jimmy, thank you once again. That was a brilliantly put. Um, um, also, uh, Jamal, I believe. That is right. Hi, Jamal, how are you doing, you right? Hi, Vedur. Fine, thank you. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you to you all guys for your efforts to make this uh, very important online campaign happen in this coronavirus uh, times. Uh, do my voice coming clear? Perfect. Okay. Uh, we in the ex Muslims of Norway are standing with uh, Suhail Arabi and want to show him solidarity and want to help him. Uh, after this uh, online campaign, uh, I hope a lot of uh, people will be aware of the situation of uh, Suhail Arabi and the human rights abuses in the Islamic uh, regime of Iran. I hope uh, a lot of people will sign the petition and uh, show solidarity, solidarity uh, with Suhail. Uh, and uh, we call everyone to join the campaign for supporting Suhail and we demand uh, Iran to release Suhail from prison and repeal uh, blasphemy law, law, laws now. Uh, Suhail Arabi is one of the thousands of the victims of Islamic intolerance, unjust and brutality we are witnessing today. Uh, all of the Islamic history is full with the intolerance and punishments against blasphemers and apostates until today. This has to be changed now. And uh, that's why we all ex-Muslim activists are uh, fighting to normalize acceptance of blasphemy and apostasy in Islam. Our struggle uh, uh, and campaign creating awareness about human rights abuses and crimes against people like Suhail. This is very important and we have to continue with that. Uh, but most importantly, you know, I think it is time for that especially all Western countries, leaders, politicians, organizations, and journalists who advocate human rights have to be really honest and try to take real actions. They are talking too much, but doing not, no real actions against regimes like Iran, while people like Suhail suffering all these years in prison. I'm really uh, sick of witnessing hypocrisy in the world. I have to say that. Either they have to stop acting like they are uh, humanists, secular, and fighting for human rights, or they have to take action against any country which doing crimes against humanity. A lot of actions can be done, 
to regimes like Iran. I think, first of all, you know, uh, those countries where uh, blasphemy is punishable by death penalty have to be discriminated, totally isolated, uh, and excluded from all international platforms and organizations. Uh, they have no places in uh, unions, commissions, or any diplomatic relations until they give the freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and basic human rights to their people. We need a better world for every human being. So we need people with courage and honesty for to achieve this goal. Keep continuing with the good job that you are doing, guys. And I want to say thank you so much and free Suhail Arabi. Thank you, Jamal. That was uh, very good to see you here. Jamal is the founder of the Ex-Muslims of Norway. Um, and it is important that we as uh, international groups uh, of free thinkers, ex-Muslims, atheists, that we continue this fight for Suhail Arabi and others uh, like him. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, we have. We have Shabnam next, I believe, because she uh, her voice was not uh, showing last time. So we can have Shabnam back. Let's see if, uh, if she action. Hello. Can you Hi, Shabnam. Hi. Hi. Great. Uh, it's working now. Welcome, Shabnam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I speak Farsi or just English? Uh, just speak in any language you feel comfortable. You can do Farsi or English. Pasman, yeah, Farsi, me gama gesh kalinadare. در مورد سوهیل که خب من خودم دارم یا دوستانم داریم مثلا یه سرشون از ایران هستن داریم تلاش میکنیم که صداهاشو کلیپ کنیم که توی هر جایی به گوش مردم برسونیم فقط یه نکته ای رو میخواستم بگم که مسلما جونش در خطر به خاطر جریان اگه یاد اون بیاد علی رزا شیر محمدی که دوست خود سوهیل بود و ناجوان مردانه توی زندان کشته شد این نکته رو بعد خیلی در نظر بگیریم که جونش واقعا در خطره و رژیم جمهوری اسلامی اگه میتونست این کارم با سوهل میکرد هنوزم مشخص نیست که خدایی نکرد این کارو میکنه یا نه فقط این که اینو در نظر بگیریم که جون این بچه ها هر کدومشون در خطره الان هم که تو اعتصاب قضا هست و فکر میکنم بعد خیلی منظمتر و بیشتر صدامون رو به دنیا برسونیم حالا هر جوری که میتونیم به هر زمانی کمپین بذاریم و به هر جایی ایمیل بدیم نامه بنویسیم برای سوهل بیشتر و بیشتر چون واقعا الان جونش در خطره و اگه یه اتفاقی برای سوهل بیفته دیگه فکر میکنم اونا به خودشون اجازه میدن که این اتفاق و, و این بلا رو سر هر کدوم از زندانی ها بیارن چون ما الان خیلی تعداد حدود خیلی زیادی تو زندان داریم فقط یکی از دوستای من که تازه از زندان تهران بزرگ آزاد شده فقط حدود 35 نفر اسم داد که اینا فقط از اعتراضات آبان الان بازداشت شدن ولی من فکر میکنم که اگه رو کمپین سوهل کار کنیم خیلی کار بزرگیه صدای حداقل همه رو میرسونیم به دنیا و اینکه خب الان به خاطر اعتصاب قضاش هم چون خون ریزی مهده کرده فکر میکنم واقعا جونش در خطره خیلی ممنون شبنم عزیز برای پیامتون و اطلاعاتی که دادین ممنون و خسته نواشی مرسی میکنم مرسی مچکر ممنون از Shabnam was just talking about how crucial uh, his uh, situation is, that he could uh, get killed any moment in prison uh, because uh, uh, as, as one of his friends was killed in prison uh, as well. And uh, that in addition, he has very serious health problems because both of the torture as well as his, um, uh, his own hunger strikes. And so, uh, it's important to keep the pressure on and ensure that he's uh, released. Our Absolutely. next uh, guest is uh, we've got Zara with us. Zara K. Hi, Zara. Hi, Zara. Can you hear us? Welcome. Hi. Thanks. How are you doing? Me. Yeah, not too bad. How's everyone going? How has the previous guest been? Everything Everyone's been. been uh, Fantastic. It's been great. Yes, Sarah K is the uh, founder of uh, Faithless Hijabi. It's a 
a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for organizing this. And I'm really glad that we're taking a few hours of our time and actually protesting for free speech and um, for Sahel in specific. Absolutely. I think it's a great initiative um, started by uh, Mariam and, uh, and the many other ex-Muslims um, that she's been working with. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the, on the current situation of Sohail? And I, I mean, I know you've had your own journey and you've documented that with, you know, with your own situation um, from Tanzania, Australia. But what are your thoughts currently now um, on, on Sohail's um, unfortunate situation? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, I when I first left, it was not like I didn't even know um, that blasphemy was a crime. Um, I remember like when I was really young, I was told it was punishable by death. And that was the only time, like even at a young age, I was like, but that doesn't make any sense that somebody should be killed for saying they don't believe or anything. Um, that was against other people's beliefs. Um, I thought it was a very harsh punishment and having it done to so many people and specifically in Sohail's case, um, I feel like the punishment is obviously um, one, quite harsh, but two, just being given Islamic education to, to I guess, force submission is, I think in my case, quite authoritarian, but also like ridiculous in a way. Um, especially the force of Islamic ed re education. It's like, you know, when they say it's a religion of peace, um, I think that has not been demonstrated in it in that specific way anyway. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's such a sad situation and it's it's mostly used to also threaten and control other people around it. Um it's like not only in Iran, but also other like other people outside of Iran um, to instill fear into submission and um, repress free speech, let alone free thought. Yeah, I think I think that's a very good point you mentioned because um, people often look at these countries in isolation, but when one country ramps up their uh, tyranny, it also gives an excuse for other countries around to say, "Well, actually, look, we need to do this because you know this is a problem." I mean. I know Mariam's mentioned that, you know, uh, in, in some Arab countries, they view atheism as some sort of terrorism or some sort of mental disease. Uh, when something happens in Iran, then they become more radical than Pakistan, their neighbor radical. So it, it's almost uh, infectious and these things spread. So if we target it in Iran or in one country, hopefully, hopefully that will send a, a message to other countries and all, all the citizens of other countries that these kind of things are not tolerable in, in the 21st century and that the zeitgeist has changed, it's moved on. And that these Muslim countries also need to move on as well and look at their citizens differently and look at human rights differently. And uh, right now in countries like Iran or Pakistan or Egypt or Saudi, human rights is seen as you know a luxury, a privilege that only some, some people in the world can afford. But of course, the very definition of, of human rights is that every single human being uh, is born yeah. with these things. And it's a non-negotiable thing, non-negotiable. Especially for large Islamic countries as well. It's quite... It's quite been it's separated from other countries that we've protested against, and like for instance Brunei and the LGBT laws. We could protest, and there were celebrities joining in against it. But I don't feel like enough action has been taken with countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia to challenge their laws. And it's been years. We're in the 21st century. We're not even like in the 19 like you know 1900s or 1700s where there are still archaic practices. I feel like this law has been gone unchallenged and a lot of people have excused it for the mere reason being it's part of their culture and it's part of their religion or that people should have known better if speech is what causes people's death then i think we live in very dangerous territories especially 100%. especially when people are bloggers and they're not even going out in public to um to protest or to say anything about it but many people who express their thought is on the internet it's funny how it's also biased towards protecting religion, protecting religions versus religious freedom to not be religious. I feel like online a lot of the times um, there are people who have been quite crude to many of us who have been critics of Islam, and they get a free pass. While others, like like other others like us in soil Arabi, um, 
we've been punished or we'll get banned or we're kind of, we're now perpetrators of um, the law. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Mariam, do you have any other uh, any other comments uh, to make? On this no, or? I mean, um, no, thank you, Zara. I mean, it's really important that we've brought all these people together. People have taken time off, as you said, to to highlight this case. It's really, really important to defend Sohail Arabi uh, because, of course, because of his courage and his bravery, but also because people should not be in prison because of thought, because of opinion, because yeah. of expressing their opinions. There's no crime that's been committed. The actual criminals are those in power in Islamic states, uh, those who are imposing blasphemy laws, apostasy laws, and uh, denying people the very right to speak and think as, as they choose. And I think, in fact, uh, you know, the heroes of our world are people like Sohail Arabi, who, uh, who are standing up and speaking out, even though they're in such difficult uh, circumstances. Definitely. I think it definitely represents something bigger than Sohail himself as well. It represents how much the repression of free speech, but also like how it's trying to manipulate people into submission. So, yeah, no, definitely. I feel like the innocent, I feel like the government has taken a very unfair, uh, unfair stance on this. But it's also, like I said, one that has been unchallenged until people like yourself, Mariam, organizing this and other people around the world standing up against them. And still, I feel like Iran has a long way to go um, in terms of getting their policy change. But it doesn't, we, like I definitely think these movements are great because it needs to continue and it won't finish after Sohail. Sohail is what will be the beginning of such movements to protest mm -hmm. against authoritarian regimes. Thank you, Zara Kay. Thank no, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a few more people in the studio, I think. Uh, we have Kemal uh, 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 Khan. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he's on right now, but we have a rock and roll sailor, I think. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, brilliant. Rock and roll sailor is a poet uh, who is joining us now. Um, welcome, and thank you for joining our protest. Oh, sorry, you're on mute. I think I think you're on mute. Sorry. Yes, you can hear me now? Okay, thank you for letting me join your, uh, your action. It's uh, very needed. Um, as a person growing up in the Western world, I'm very fortunate that I haven't had to go through what people in, uh, in the Middle East go through. On the other hand, I see very clearly around me in this culture that the roots are still are still in a patronizing cult. Do I try to get on mute? No, I'm not on mute. Yeah. Oh, you muted me. I was muted before. You you get a delay of two minutes, sweetheart. Thank you. I will resume. Um, I notice uh, a lot of the the similarities in uh, the patronizing uh, cult, since uh, these cultures are also based on on uh, a one god reality which is no reality at all. So I would like to contribute a poem of mine. It's a poem for freedom called Facts of Life. Reality needs no submission. There are over 3000 gods being worshiped on this planet, yet none of them are real. There are over 10,000 names for the absolute life power and how small it makes one feel. And one of them is freedom. So claiming to know yours and to speak in his name, thinking you have any right to decree is more than a dangerous delusion within your very own system, it's inherent blasphemy. For words paint pictures beyond the touch of a brush, sandstone carvings in the face of time that don't make insane desert dreamings rhyme, while you defamate the life divine that in this earthly paradise is a given, in every breath and bread 
you may receive. So, when freedom sings with every bird, who are you to claim any life song should remain unheard? As blinded by your impotence, you lock up bodies and throw stones. Life's ultimate power will just mock you more, while only yourself you do deceive, and the pain you spread you will receive. For freedom is a state of mind, the only state that needs no passport. It's the free that defiantly know life's justice holds no court. So, as you blind yourself from the reality of life that proves you to be the insult you so vainly fear, know that blossoming eyes are watching and the dawn is always near. No matter how many veils you throw over the sun, no matter how hard you try to shroud the moon, while you try to snuff out candles, the coffin of your ignorance will grow itself as many handles. As the stars shine on in utterly gracious disregard of midnight or noon, and the long grass waving in the wind like hair, does eventually all deserted ruins overgrow. The ruin that is yours alone, you, the one that claims to know. While birds ever sing on their own accord, be they caged or free, and even the worn out only sleep for dreaming, lives open eyes as ever see. Beating hearts dance forever, without and beyond meaning, worshiping the precious joy of simple being. Thank you. Bro, that was uh, truly, truly amazing. I mean, there's so many lines in there that I could pick out and we can talk about. But the one that hit me the hardest was the, the was it freedom is the only state which requires no passport? Indeed. The, that, that is, uh, I mean, I would love to ask your, your inspiration about uh, where you where, where you get these lines and ideas from because it, it, it's like I don't know how to think like this so you know for someone who has that vision you know it really is amazing well thanks for that and uh, perhaps we can engage in in later private conversation as to how my mindset comes about 100 percent. thank you so much for your time thank really you it. it was brilliant thank Great. you so much thank you thank you very much um, I'm not sure if we have. Do we have other guests, Walid, in, have, in the room? We have Armin uh, in the Inayati. In okay, uh, Armin in Ayati. Great. Welcome, Armin. Salam, arzmi konam. Ba ame shoma dostan adiz. Hi, Gatan. Dar morde masale ki baraye. سوهیل عربی پیش اومده بود یه مسئله واقعا مهمه جون سوهیل در خطره و همه با هم دیگه دست در دست هم دیگه واقعا تلاش بکنن و با تشکیل کمپین ها و حتی اعتراض هایی که حالا اکسیون هایی که برگزار میکنن باید صدای خودش رو صدای سوهیل رو مخصوصا صدای سوهیل رو به پوش جهانیان برسونن و باعث بشن اون تفکر خونخار اسلام از این بیشتر آسیبی به سوهل وارد نکنه نه تنها به سوهل تمام آتیست هایی که در داخل ایران دارن زندگی میکنن سوهل در بنده و شاید در یک مکان سربسته است اما ما کلی آتیست داریم داخل ایران که توی پوست خودشون توی کالبد خودشون زندانی هم و نمیتونن صحبت بکنن و نمیتونن جایی برای افکار خودشون پیدا بکنن واقعا از بچه های آتیست میخوام که تا جایی که میتونن بر علیه این تفکر پلید اسلام واقعا فعالیت بکنن 
و سعی بکنن سهیل رو از بند نجات بدن نه تنها سهیل بلکه کلیه آتیست هایی که در بند اسلام هن و در بند ظلم مسلمانان هن. خیلی ممنونم که این وقت رو به من دادید متشکرم. خیلی ممنون آرمین عزیز برای پیامتون واقعا دستتون در نکنه مرسی uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, some comments uh, lots of comments in the uh, live uh, comment section which I'd like to address a few of them if possible Um, but before that, I was wondering, Walid, maybe we can have Shaheen back as well, Shaheen yeah, yeah. Mohammed, uh, since uh, we haven't heard from him for a while. Yeah, actually, I was listening to you guys, and it's great. I'm really happy that we, we did this, and with, with all the people that we are here, we did this, and this is a great job. And uh, I have some connections who told to Sohail that we are going to have this, and right now he knows about uh, about this live, and he knows about uh, the protest, and it's really great. And we, are, we also have other political prisoners who right now are uh, in jail, and but they just come out for a couple of days, and they have to go back again, and they are watching our live, and but they can't talk, and uh, but they can't talk on our live, but. Uh, they're here and they support us and uh, i just wanted to talk about the petition that we have started actually we have started two petitions one of them uh, we have started one of them in one year ago about the previous time that sohail was on hunger strike about uh, more than uh, i believe more than 30 years 30 days and the other one we have started it about uh, uh, a week ago and uh, about a week ago with ex-muslims of scandinavia and uh, i believe uh, we can we can sign them to support sohail and we can share them and to tell and then we talk about sohail to our pe our friends and, uh, and the people around us his voice will be heard because right now he has no he has not he has just not too much support and we need to support him more and uh, that and i believe these kind of protests are great we can have them more and we can do it more and uh, talk about other political prisoners also like sohail that they're in jail and their voice are, uh, can't be heard i have nothing else to talk about i want to just thank you thank you mariam thank you valid for everything and i, I want to thank a lot from the people about, about uh, from our our friends who have been in and talked and all our friends have been in uh, YouTube and they have uh, they like Suhaila Salam, like Hamid Rosami, like uh, like uh, Charles and like all of them that they have been with us and it's a great it's great that they support each other and we support Suhail actually. So I just wanna tell. I just wanna say bye, and I'm waiting here down for Mariam and Valid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for Thank your time, you. also. Thank you. I um. Can I just go over a few things as well, just to make sure um uh, that we we've, we've mentioned everyone. We had videos from Peter Tatchell, the human rights campaigner, Rahila Gupta, the writer and activist. Um, uh, we also had uh, some videos, uh, messages from Hala Tahiri from the Middle Eastern Women and Society Organization, uh, Zinab El Razui, who's uh, a former journalist of Charlie Hebdo. Uh, we had uh, a video from Nada Perat Radfrau from the Civil Courage in Croatia Center. Uh, we also had photos from uh, Muslimish, Free Thought Lebanon, Rana Ahmad of Atheist Refugee Relief. Unfortunately, we weren't able to show those uh, all, but we will make sure that they're available um, online as well um, as uh, the various yeah. messages that we've already read out to you. We, we, we also have a, I think, oh, he's gone now. We have we had payment, uh, but I'm not sure he's here anymore. Okay, yeah. um, can can I just use this opportunity now to speak on the, lots of the comments that we've received? And thank you for all the here with us. Uh, some people are, are saying that uh, we should be out in the street, uh, we shouldn't be here on the internet. 
uh, I want to remind everybody that, it is, uh, uh, that many of us are in lockdown now as a result of coronavirus. So it's impossible to be out in the streets, uh, but that doesn't mean, um, sorry, I think there's a lot of feedback from your mic, uh, Wally, sorry. sorry. Um, uh, that doesn't mean that we should uh, just stay in our homes and not, not speak. Uh, on the issue of social media too, I think it's important to remember that uh, uh, Soil Arabi is in prison for something that he did on social media, which was on Facebook. He wrote a post on Facebook. Uh, social media has been an important vehicle for people to connect to each other, to say things that are disallowed in uh, many of the authoritarian societies that they live in. And so social media is part and parcel of uh, people's activism. You know, from the Arab Spring, there was talk of it being a Twitter revolution, uh, to um, the very fact that a lot of authoritarian regimes, like the Iranian regime, the Saudi regime, uh, and other Islamic states, all try to censor the internet because of its importance in mobilizing support, in raising awareness and highlighting awareness. So I don't quite see the point of people saying that we shouldn't be doing this. Well, you're free to do other things as well, but don't stop people from being active in any way that they can. Social media is also an important form of activism. I really think that we should keep putting the pressure on, we shouldn't stop. Uh, as many of our speakers have mentioned, it's not just Sohail Arabi, there are so many political prisoners in Iran, there are so many free thinkers, blasphemers, apostates in uh, countries across the world, many of them in Islamic states, uh, whether it's Raif Badawi in Saudi Arabia, whether it is uh, Niaz Azami in uh, Pakistan, uh, there are so many free thinkers uh, in various countries that need our support. And Sohail, he symbolizes uh, many cases of, you know, this, this demand to think as we want, to live as we want, uh, without religion's intervention in our lives. And I think that by defending Sohail Arabi, we defend all blasphemers, all apostates, all free thinkers in the world. And we have to keep doing that. It is our responsibility. If Sohail can be in prison today and write open letters, despite the fact that he may be killed for it, and signing his, his letters as an atheist, I think the least we can do is whether on the streets, on social media, to keep highlighting and raising his voice and the voice of many others. It is our responsibility. We have a duty to do it. And I think, uh, you know, this, um, the first ever, uh, as far as I know, live protest online uh, was, I think, in my opinion, a really great success. We brought so many people together. So many people sent their messages. And there were so many more that we just couldn't, play because, um, you know, we weren't able to play a lot of the videos that we got, show a lot of the pictures that we've, we've received. So hopefully, Walid, we can do that um, in the near future. So I do want to thank everyone who's here uh, and, and to say keep fighting. Don't listen to anyone who says, oh, this is, you know, signing a petition is useless. Well, Sahel Arabi was on death row and, uh, and he isn't anymore. There are lots, if, if anyone is an activist, uh, and many of us here are, we know how many people have been saved because of these so-called useless petitions and these useless protests. Uh, nothing is useless. I think it shows our humanity. It, it, it shows our solidarity. It links us with people across the world. And it, it's important to do it. And social media is one way of doing it. And we have to carry on doing that. Uh, and we have to um, continue, keep keep on, keep on, don't ever stop. And don't let anyone tell you that what you're doing is useless because it's not, uh, it's not. So thank you so much for being here. I, I think it's just been so important for me as well uh, to be part of this, even though I failed so miserably. As you can see from the few times that Walid shared the whole thing, it was so bloody interesting and brilliant. No, no, no. <laughs> I think, Amarim, you are not giving yourself enough credit. You are much better than you think you are. You are a natural at this. And uh, honestly, uh, I was just trying to make sure that, you know, um, we, we could play the videos or that everyone in the, uh, in the um, all the guests coming up, that they were ready to go ahead. But I think uh, you've done a fantastic job and you deserve a, uh, a massive virtual round of applause uh, by everyone. So uh, you did a fantastic job. And also, I think everyone that also watched and... Um, uh, 
contributed, the different speakers. I, I know we're speaking. Um, there are people all over the world who uh, joined in in you know in in, in, in uh, English and in Farsi. Um, I think it's absolutely amazing that we have people speaking in Farsi as well, because a lot of the time we speak in English to people that already kind of agree with us or kind of already know. But I think it's also important. I think the next phase of this whole movement um, is to speak in the language of the people. So uh, uh, Farsi, Arabic, Urdu, uh, Hindi, you know, uh, Bengali as well. When we speak in these languages and Muslims from those countries hear what we have to say, that will have a, even a... a a bigger impact because you know it's one thing to uh, get people like me new excited but it's another thing to get people in those countries excited and stimulate and actually make them realize muslim or not that there are injustices happening in their country and the whole world is watching and um, sometimes people don't realize is that other people around the world are watching what's happening in iran and in um, saudi and egypt and pakistan and uh, we, we uh, expect more from them as fellow human beings. So I think you did a fantastic job. I would love to do this again with more people. Um, I think we could really start something. And uh, just want to say thank you once again. Thank you for having me on for the very little time that I was on. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you, are the, you are the main attraction. So I think people really love to see you on. And hopefully we can do this again. Uh, thank you, Walid, uh, for for your um, you know your generosity always in helping set this up, helping us uh, do this, and also uh, bringing your expertise. And of course, Shahin Mohammadi, who uh, co-organized this with with the two of us. Uh, we still have people in the chat room, and we still have uh, another nine minutes or so. So, if people on uh, who are watching us live don't mind, we'll just carry on until our three hours is up. Uh, uh, we have someone in the studio right now. It is um, Paymon Partovi. So please uh, feel free to join us, Paymon. Join us, Paymon. Paymon, 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 Paymon
Um, were, were there any um, comments you wanted to address? Uh, I know we have a, a lot of people in the, in the comment section. Any questions from you guys that you wanted to um, address or anything that thought you were, was uh, interesting? Got, yeah. uh, we have a message here saying, thanks, Vidu and Mariam, for hosting this and raising awareness. Now it's our turn to spread the message and hasten for the day for uh, Suhail's freedom. Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, what I hope we can take from this live stream is that which, however you can contribute in your own way, uh, please do so. Even if it's tweeting or sharing a video or talking to someone who you think is like-minded, uh, if everyone could do their own bit, you know, mm -hmm. accumulatively, it would make a big difference. Uh, and never despair, never think, oh, this is just all pointless and all the rest of it. Um, if you think like that, it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you're right, nothing will happen. So we have to keep positive and keep doing whatever we can in our own capacity. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to also highlight now that we have a few more minutes uh, is, is this issue about, uh, you know, uh, uh, this idea that, you know, the people of Iran, it's important to respect their beliefs. And this is something we often hear uh, when uh, we, uh, when there's criticism of those who've committed blasphemy. Well, they should have respected uh, the people's religion and culture. And I, I suppose the point that's important to make here is that Sohail Arabi is also part of the people. I am also part of the people, as we all are. And as we know, no society has uh, one way of thinking. There are so many different ways of thinking and beliefs in any given society. And if you look at uh, countries under Islamic rule in particular, there is a huge battle taking place in those countries against authoritarian religious dictatorships. And so uh, I, I suppose when we side with people like Sohail Arabi, we side with that segment of the population that is fighting for freedom, and for free expression and um, uh, freedom of thought and opinion, you know? And I think uh, the, the idea that people hide behind people's culture and religion in order to victimize once again blasphemers and apostates rather than siding with those uh, yeah. who they should be on, on their side uh, is really a cop out, you know? Because as we know uh, in Britain, for example, there's a huge debate over Brexit. There's no one way of looking at the issue. Um, you know, and, and it's the same in other countries and even more so because people are living in theocracies where their every aspect of their lives is under control and under threat. And so anything they do from unveiling, you know, we had Shaparak here who was uh, in jail because she didn't want to comply with compulsory veiling rules. to Behnam, who was an activist for children's rights and labor rights, anything you do for a decent life becomes political, becomes a challenge to the theocratic state. And so, um, you know, it, it is important to see that there are differences of opinion. What's important is which side are we on? I think that's the question everybody has to ask themselves, you know. Uh, yes, of course, there'll be people who support the regime, but there are a vast majority, in my opinion, who don't support the regime. And we see that in reality by the protests in the streets, by the numbers of people who are in prison, who are being tortured, who are on death row, and also the fact that the Islamic states themselves see atheism and free thought as such a crime, and, and because they see it as such a threat, you know. Uh, for example, the Saudi government, as another speaker had mentioned, equates atheism with terrorism, the Iranian government has talked about the tsunami of atheism in Iran and the need to withstand it. Uh, you know, the Egyptian Ministry of Education has set up a project to eliminate atheism from Egypt. So what I want to say is that because they themselves see this trend, they wouldn't need apostasy and blasphemy laws if everybody agreed with them. And I think for us, we need to say, Okay, there might be people who support an Islamic regime. We support secular states. We support free thought. We support free expression. And we're going to stand with those who are risking their lives to, to defend those principles, uh, not just here in the West, but everywhere. I think that's perfectly said. Literally, I think you've hit every single point and uh, very, very beautifully said, Mariam. Honestly, very inspiring. This, this is why you are Marim Namazi. This is why you are Marim Namazi. <laughs> Thank you so much. Honestly, uh, Walid, for your help and uh, 
your support, we wouldn't have been able to do this. We're completely clueless when we we, we came to Walid with the idea that we want to have a have an online protest, and he's the one who told us what to do and how to do it and set it all up for us. So thank you, Walid. Thank you, Shaheen uh, Mohammadi, for uh, co-organizing this with us. Uh, and thank you all, all of you for all the work um, you've been doing. All of you who are here, who stayed with us, who joined in, who spoke, who supported Sohail. Uh, you know, this is, uh, of course, not the first protest and it's not going to be the last. We're going to keep on, keep on until he's free and until there is no more blasphemy and apostasy laws uh, in, in, in any country. You know, it's a dream maybe, but many, many changes across the world start with dreams and then they become realities. So love Perfect. you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure hosting. And uh, like you said, we'll do this again in the future and we'll keep you up to date with everything. So guys, do what you can. Like this video, share this video, get it out to um, uh, to your, on, on your social media. And uh, guys, thank you once again for tuning in and for everyone who was involved. Thank you. Peace. Bye. All right. So what do we do?